hockey. Tonight's game is brought to you by Renault, European technology and design that's affordable. Renault, the one to watch. And by Michigan National Banks, where you get more for your money. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And by Little Caesars, with over 150 locations in the Detroit metro area to serve you. And by your 48 greater Detroit area Midas shops. Trust the Midas touch. And by Thornapple Valley's great tasting hot dogs, hams, bacon, and sausage. And by J.C. Penney, your headquarters for Levi Corduroy Jeans. Now from Rinkside, here's Bruce Martin and Sid Abel. Last season, the Red Wings earned a playoff berth. The first time since 1978. Round one found them up against division foe St. Louis. The two teams very evenly matched, as evidenced by the close scores. In game one at St. Louis, Mike Leut was outstanding and frustrated the Wings' offense. A 3-2 victory for St. Louis. Game two, still in St. Louis, set the tone really for the rest of the series. The name of the game seemed to be hitting, and most of it seemed to be done by the Blues. The Red Wings woke up and fought back, though, in the third period of this hockey game. And this time, Greg Steffen preserved the lead with some incredible saves. They won the hockey game 5-3, and they headed home to Detroit with a series all even. Hockey League history. The first playoff game ever in the Joe Lewis Arena. And what a hockey game it was. This hockey game was all tied at 3-3 three to three at the end of the regulation time. So they played another 20 minutes. And still, the hockey game was tied at 3-3. Three to three. And so we went into a second overtime before St. Louis Blues finally scored and won an exciting hockey game. Game four ended the series, but not before another overtime. This time the St. Louis Blues won and took round one of the Norris Division playoffs. Tonight, the Detroit Red Wings duplicate what has not been done in 20 seasons. Enter the playoffs two years in a row, and this time facing the Red Hot Chicago Blackhawks. Against each other, the Red Wings and the Blackhawks have a perfectly even record this season. Each team with three victories in their own building and another tie. Ah, but you can throw out the numbers, because tonight begins a whole new season as the third-place Red Wings meet the second-place Blackhawks. Round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs, coming up live on TV 20. Sid Abel, there is very little in professional sports that equals playoff hockey, National Hockey League brand. A fellow, though, that's going to miss it as far as being on the ice is concerned is not going to miss it so far as we are concerned, Danny Gare. I know how much he'd like to be here, but Danny has an opportunity right now to talk with you. Well, I wanted to ask Danny about his suspension and uh, just how he took it, and did he expect when he was suspended that he would have to sit out this first game of the playoffs? Well, I really didn't, Sid. I, uh, I took it kind of hard because uh, I didn't expect a three-game suspension and especially carry over into the playoffs. But unfortunately, we tried to get the, the rule changed and the league stood by their decision. And here I am sitting. I'd much rather be out on the ice at this time. Well, Danny, you've met the Chicago club eight times this year. You're dead even, the Red Wings and, and the Blackhawks. How do you look at the series now that comes down to playoff time? Well, Sid, as you know, that uh, playoff hockey is a totally new season and everybody uh, is prepared and better and, and it's uh, a must-win situation in every game it seems and I think the big thing here is uh, in our series is going to be goaltending as much as any series and probably the specialty teams the penalty killing and the power play we'll look for you in the lineup tomorrow I'll very be there. best of luck now thank you so the Detroit Red Wings and the Chicago Blackhawks first game of the first round of Stanley Cup play here at Chicago Stadium we'll be back with the opening face-off in a moment
so you can perhaps hear why they call this uh, crowd worth a goal or two. Brian Lewis is a referee for the hockey game. Bob Hodges and Ryan Bozak are the two linesmen. Greg Steffen back in goal for the Detroit Red Wings tonight against the Blackhawks this season. Greg has played quite well. He's won three, lost two, and tied another one. And it'll be Murray Bannerman who was injured the latter part of the season and Bannerman's record against Detroit, much like Steffen's, three wins, two losses, and no ties. And so these two teams with even records all season long, but home ice has been a great deal to the two of them, get set to get this opening game underway. Kelly Kissio in between Brad Smith and John O'Grodnick, the starting lineup for the Detroit Red Wings right now, but they make a quick player change as the puck slides into the Detroit zone. Heading back after Jack O'Callaghan turns in behind his own goal for Chicago. Lost it there for the moment to Foster. Foster knocked it away. Foster is out now centering O'Grodnick, and the puck gloved ahead from one player to another, so it's whistled down. Smith and Doug Wilson doing a little jumping right off the bat. Quick change by Coach Nick Milano. Kissio starting and then getting right off the ice to let Foster come on. Well, Colin Campbell remains out with an injury, though he's here in Chicago. Frank Chernick sitting out the game. The Red Wings a player over the limit. Blaine Lambert remains on the injured list, too. Bob McMillan and Dan Frawley are out of the Chicago lineup through injuries. Uh, not neither of them uh, a key player on the Blackhawk plans. Detroit have two keys, three keys out when you figure Gare sitting yep. out of suspension. Now here are the Hawks coming out of their own zone. Yaremchuk checked at center ice by John O'Grodnick and Reed Larson tips it ahead. Brad Smith of the wings. This is just his second game as a Red Wings this season. The puck ended up in behind the Chicago goal. The Hawks will dig it out along the boards and a long pass from Sutter to Rem Yaremchuk over the line into the Detroit zone. Randy Lannister spills him to the ice. Lysiak tried to center it. That deflects to the corner, and here's John O'Grotney. O'Grotney to the wings, heading back out, now to center ice, over the line, but he held up at the blue line, put both Kissio and Smith offside. Well, I would think both these teams will be a little nervous getting this game started. Uh, there's a lot of... It's a different game altogether than the regular season game. Out of town, some interesting scores for you. At the end of the first period, Montreal Canadiens at home are trailing to the Boston Bruins, two to nothing. Buffalo and Quebec at Buffalo end of the first period, a 1-1 tie, and also going into the second period. Philadelphia at home, leading the New York Rangers, three to nothing. New York Islanders and Washington scoreless after the first period. We have now played one minute of the first period here at Chicago Stadium. Buck driven all the way back into the Chicago end. They'll whistle this down for icing as Kurt Fraser's back to touch it. And the play will come back into the Detroit zone. I always look at games here played in this building because of the crowd and the, as you mentioned, the crowd and the noise uh, is probably good for a goal a game, but I always feel that if you can get out of this first period and still be in the hockey game, you are in for a good night because uh, this Chicago club like to get off to a quick start first two games here in Chicago the teams return to Detroit for games Saturday and Sunday and then if the fifth game necessary back here Tuesday there's a shot from the blue line knocked down out in front of the Detroit goal and Greg Steffen was really decked by Kurt Fraser as the puck goes down the ice and Steffen has been shaken up and here now the Hawks moving it back into the Detroit zone Fraser really felt it Steffen Here's Murray clearing it into the corner. Stefan is up in behind his own, or rather in front of his own goal, but he was definitely shaken up. Wing just trying to work it out of their own zone. Here now Duguay plays it up the left side. Larry Crater chases it in. Crater heads toward the corner, laid it in behind the Chicago goal. And the Hawks, Ben Wilson, shoots at the length of the ice. This will be an icing call against Chicago. So we shall be back to see what happens. We're a minute 45 into the opening period. No score. We pause for this. It's just a light. Greg Steffen took a little whack at the Chicago forward. He turned around and fell to him, knocked him down. And Steffen very slow getting up, but he's seemingly okay now. The play goes back into the Detroit zone. Greg Smith dumps it along the boards. Mano gloved it off to center ice. It's played there by DuPont. Jerome Dupont will pick it up again at his own blue line for the Blackhawks. Early moments of the first period. Tom Lysiak sent it over the line, but way offside was Yaremchuk, and the play will come out over the Detroit blue line. 
Well, you know, Bruce, the talk in the papers here and on TV and radio has been Greg Steffen, the Chicago player, saying that they have to try and get him riled up and get him off of his game. Colford uh, mentioned about how hot he has played against Chicago all season long. They're giving Colford a lot of credit here, too, Sid. He took over this club February 4th, replacing the fired coach, Orville Tessier, and since that time, the Hawks have won 16 games, lost only seven, tied another four. And rightfully so, he should get credit. Uh, he took a club that was floundering, that was 22, 28, and 3, and really turned them around. Secord, Larmer, and Savard up front now for Chicago as the play goes back into the Detroit zone. In behind his own goal, Gerard Gallant took it away. Now Gallant dumps it out center ice. Buck evidently knocked down with a high stick, and now Secord and Gallant nose to nose and we may have this kind of a hockey game before it's all over particularly if they're going to try to get rough with Greg Steffen and there are going to be two of them go off. Well, Gerard Gallant the young man will not back up and Secord is a good hard nosed player but he's not the one that's going in it's Savard. Two minutes 25 seconds the time of the penalties. Two minutes apiece Savard and Gallant. Well Anytime you can take Savard off the ice and uh, not, not lose an Eiserman or Grodnick or someone like that, I would say it's a good, good penalty. High sticking calls to the two of them at two minutes and 25 seconds. Gerard Gallant and Dennis Savard. So each team now plays short a man. The Red Wings have Eiserman and John O'Grodnick up front. Larson and Lattister. Lattister took a heavy bump. From Olchik, but still worked it out, and now here's John O'Grodnick over the line with Eisenman. O'Grodnick fired a shot just wide. Ed Olchik dumped it in behind his own goal. O'Callahan of the Blackhawks goes in after it. Left it there for Doug Wilson. We have no score nearing the three-minute mark of the first period. Each team now short a man. Olchik plays it ahead. On the move is Troy Murray over the line into the Detroit zone. His shot knocked away the side of the goal by Greg Steffen, and John O'Grodnick worked it away from Olchik. Here now, Grodny coming out center ice. Puck picked off there by Randy Latticer. Latticer carries over the Chicago line. Eisenman back on the right side for Reed Larson with a drive, and Batterman makes his first save. Eisenman tried to hold it in. He was being grabbed, though, and the play comes down the ice. Latticer knocked his man down. Olchik drove a shot way high and wide. Puck held in by Bob Murray, and Larson will chase it in behind his own goal. Reed Larson heading out of the Detroit end, coming out center ice, had it knocked away by Rich Patterson. Patterson back into the Detroit zone. Here now DuPont. DuPont took the shot, deflected off to the side of the goal. Murray knocked it into the corner. Larson ties his man up there. And John Barrett in behind his own goal was turned around. DuPont, though, couldn't get to it, and the wings batted back into the Chicago end. They'll whistle it down for icing, and the play will come back into the Detroit zone. Well, there's the difference between regular season play and playoff. John Barrett being knocked off the puck. He just made a dive and made sure that he cleared the zone with it. In fact, hit it a little too hard. It went all the way down for an icing. During a regular season game, uh, a play like that, that wouldn't happen. Ron Duguay, another fine season for the Red Wings, comes out now. He kiss the old. Each team short a man for 31 seconds. Gallant and Savard having that much time remaining in their high sticking penalties. Patterson and Gardner up front for, or rather Gardner for uh, the Chicago Blackhawks play to the right side of the Detroit goal and Duguay won the draw. In behind his own net, Greg Smith lost it right there, came right on in front. And a save made by Greg Steffen. And there's a penalty coming off a cross-checking call to John Barrett. But a giveaway by the wing almost cost him and does cost him a penalty. We'll be back with the Chicago power play. Let's pause first for this. So, I owe you for two pizzas. No, Mr. Carlin. At Little Caesars, when you pay for one pizza, you get another one free. Well, that's very honorable, but if we get two, we should pay for two. But if you pay for two, you'll get four. Then we'll pay for four. Then you'll get eight. Well, then I'll pay. Little Caesars, when you make a pizza this good, one just isn't enough. Then we'll pay for 512. Then you'll get 1,024. Then we'll pay. 
Greg Smith trying to go in behind the net. He was looking back to make a play and then missed the puck. And in a way, the Wings were very, very fortunate that Chicago didn't score. The puck did hit Greg Steffen. He had him down. But in the meantime, Barrett cross-checked the player and wound up getting a penalty. But miscues deep in your own zone can really hurt. And uh, a veteran player, you don't expect it from the Smiths and that you would think maybe a Larry Trader because of Dwight Fox now the only forward for the Red Wings 15 seconds left in the penalties to Gallon and survive Barrett goes off for cross checking at four minutes and four seconds and here now Doug Wilson of Chicago up the right side taken over the line and into the Detroit zone by Ludzik Ludzik has it along the boards it's Larmer rather off now to Wilson he scores Chicago, a one to lead. That puck went right through Greg Steffen's legs, but it was set up perfectly. Wilson away over in the point, right to the top of the circle, a shot that was just about knee high. Greg Steffen complained. Greg Steffen complained that Ludzik interfered with him, but I don't believe he did. The puck went right through Greg's legs. So Chicago get on the board first. Doug Wilson, a power play goal at four minutes and 26 seconds of this first period. Oh, he can fire him. Yes, he can. He is not like Lee Larson. Larmer and Bob Murray draw the assists on the goal at four minutes and 26 seconds. So the bad pass out from behind the Detroit goal, or when he lost it back there, by Greg Smith. Actually cost the Red Wings of the then now Larry Trader loses it the same way right out of front of the score. It's plays like this that really knock you. And boy, you can't give up two quick goals in open playoff hockey. Both times the puck skipped away from the Detroit defenseman, Larry Trader this time. And there was no doubt about it. Perfect play out in front of the net. So two goals, just 21 seconds apart. Razor and Doug Wilson. The Wings are down by two. Here now, Steve Eisenman up the left side to Daryl Sittler. Over the line, his centering pass broken away by Wilson. They jam in along the boards. Duguay and Fraser, the puck trying to work it loose was Eisenman. The Wings do. Here's Sittler. Sittler handed it out in front, but that's knocked away. And back down the ice now is Olchik. And Olchik into the Detroit zone, pinned in along the boards by Brad Park. And Larry Trader sends it up the left side. Eisenman's pass skips out center ice and back after it, Troy Murray. Murray shoots it back to the Detroit zone. Brad Park will take it there. Here's Duguay, center ice for the wings, drives a long shot. Bannerman, no trouble with that. And Sittler was two or three feet over the line and offside. One, one thing that you didn't want to see happen was come out and make mistakes early and have them score two quick goals, but it has happened. Now the wings are going to have to regroup and go after them. Well, two absolute giveaways by the Red Wing defense, and both end up as goals. One ended up as a penalty to John Barrett and a quick goal on the power play by Chicago, and the other... Fraser just came streaking in as the puck slid out in front of the Detroit net and rammed it home. And both times, Bruce, it appeared as though they tried to, like, yeah, make, make a little a slap pass, slap shot pass, and miscued on the puck. Now the play goes back into the Chicago zone. Bob Murray off to the side of his own goal. Feeds it ahead to Sutter. The Hawk captain broken up center ice by Gallant. Over the line, Bob Mano. Mano tried to work out in front, hands it off. Now to Boulder, and he hit the goal post. Bolderev drove it off the post to the right side of Bannerman. They went in behind the Chicago goal. The Hawks have it there, scooping out center ace. At his own blue line, Greg Smith ahead to Gallant. Gallant took it over the line, but coming back, Yaremchuk will take the loose puck there. Bob Murray's pass knocked down by Gallant, bouncing around in the Chicago zone, and the Hawks' Lysiak heads out. Yaremchuk over the line into the Detroit zone. Up the left side, now Lysiak. Isaac put it right to the goal, and it's knocked away and grabbed by 
goaltender Stefan. Oh, a deflection right out in front of the net uh, off Sutter. We'll be back. It's two to nothing Chicago. Let's pause for this. My daughter calls it the blue bomber. My wife thinks I ought to get rid of it. And it is dealer for exhaust, brake, and suspension service you know you can trust. Greg Stefan, very fortunate to make a save on a, a deflection, and then they rebound right out in front of him, and Greg Smith was there to push Sutter away from the net. Now Kelly Kissio, Brad Smith, and John O'Grodnick, the forward line of the wings. Play came back to the blue line. Ben Wilson, a long shot. Stefan cleared that away. Dug out of the corner by Larmer, but John O'Grodnick broke up his pass. Feeds ahead to Larson. At center ice, Kissio three on through the wings. Kissio hands it off to O'Grodnick with a drive, and that deflected wide of the goal. O'Grodnick didn't get too much on it. Secord plays it ahead. Larson held it in. Here's Brad Smith heading to the corner. Brad Smith trying to pull away from Ben Wilson. Puck comes back now to O'Grodnick. He sets up Larson. Reed Larson with a quick shot. And Smith deflected it over the top of the goal. That was knocked down by Ben Wilson. Larson from the blue line, and he just missed by an inch or two. And that puck bounced high up over the glass and into the crowd, and the wings had their chances. Two great chances. Reed Larson shooting through uh, traffic out in front of the net. Brad Smith come off a post and deflected the first shot in. The second one just skimmed by the open side. But the wings putting pressure on. Reed Larson getting the shot away the moment it come to him. To deflect it out in front. But well, Bannerman was right there on the corner. Give Brad Smith credit. He's been charging in front of that goal. Then made it rough on the goaltender Bannerman. Chicago leading the hockey game two to nothing. Face off to the left side of the Chicago net. Foster Smith and O'Grodney. This time the Hawks won the draw. Buck comes out center ice. Larson hauls Secord down. He took a dive. He took a dive, and the referee waited a long waited. time. I think the bench the, called the, the penalty. The crowd called that penalty. He did not call it. And then all of a sudden, when the crowd started to yell, Lewis waves Larson to the penalty box. And the Red Wings question him about that. We'll be back with another Chicago power play in a moment. Secor trying to break away. Reed did put the hook on him, but Secor just jumped. He actually got by yeah. Reed Larson. He was in the clear to go after the puck. I then he just let himself fall. I wish we'd have had a shot of the referee because he had no intention of calling no, the penalty. The crowd called it. The crowd all started to roar the fact that Secor fell. And uh, first thing you know, he looked over and thought, well, better call a penalty. But Detroit have to stay on the ice. They've had three of the four penalties called. They've already had a power play goal scored on them. Now here's Wilson up the right side over the line. Savard handed it out in front, broken up by Greg Smith. And Bob Mano clears it the length of the ice. Foster and Mano with John Barrett and Greg Smith, the penalty killers for Detroit. We've played seven and a half minutes of the first period. Two nothing, Chicago leads. The Hawks drive it back into the Detroit end. Buck tipped back out center ice. The Murray had Foster all tied up. He couldn't move. And here now Doug Wilson will bring it back. Over the line, Larmer trying to go through. Larmer pulled away from Foster's check. Back on the line to Murray with a drive. And Stefan got a piece of that, deflected it over the top of the goal. Mano and Savard go in along the boards, and the puck loose to Foster, who comes out center ice. Now Foster dumps it back into the Chicago zone. In behind his own net, Bannerman leaves it there with a minute remaining in the penalty to Larson. Coming back now, Bob Murray shooting it in behind the Detroit goal. Grodnick chased it down, didn't get it out. Murray holds it back on the point. Here's Murray with a drive, and it's fired wide. Came back to Doug Wilson at the left point. Off the circle to Savard. Then to Savard, back on the line, and Wilson drills that one, and the big save made by Stefan. Now Troy Murray of the Hawks holds it along the rim of the circle. Chicago, the extra man, back of the goal, Savard. Now Savard put it right to the goal, and he scores. goal here. I mean, Savard just looking to put it out in front of the net and Greg was more concerned about the people just hanging around and the puck again went right through his feet. He didn't get his legs together and he didn't have the stick right down. The puck just swished right through his legs. But Savard not, I don't think trying to score. I think really trying to put the, play, the puck in play out in front of the net because of the traffic there just from a bad angle, put it right alongside of the post. Greg was standing there with a stick off of, from his feet, his legs apart, and the puck went right through. 
So now it's three to nothing. The power play goal by Savard comes at eight minutes and 36 seconds. John O'Grodnick drills a shot from center ice. Bannerman stopped that. Here's O'Grodnick. Played it toward the corner. Brown knocked that away. Patterson trying to work it out for Chicago and does. Scoops it back into the Detroit zone and Brad Park is back after it. We are now at nine minutes in the first period and Chicago opens up a three nothing lead. Larry Trader drives another long shot and Bannerman has no trouble with that. Ludzik brings it right back down the ice. Scoops it off to the side of the Detroit goal. Brad Smith of the wings. His pass won't come out. Held in at the blue line by Bob Murray. Shot deflected into the corner. Ludzik sends it back to DuPont. Ludzik, Larry Trader collide. Here now is Kissio working it ahead to John O'Grodnick. O'Grodnick's shot deflected away by Bob Murray. Goes way up into the crowd, almost into the organ loft. Yeah. So Dennis Savard gets his first playoff goal. John O'Grodnick. Uh, to talk up to John. He missed a lot of games last season, but then come back and played in the playoffs. Doug Wilson and Troy Murray draw the assist on Savard's goal. Eight minutes, 36 seconds. Two power play goals by the Hawks. They lead it by three. Here's Reed Larson shooting it back into the Chicago end. They're going to call this icing as Wilson goes after it. And they'll bring the face off back into the Detroit end. The Wings are arguing this one a bit. Uh, the Red Wings have kind of been just knocked back uh, on their, off their feet with this quick three-goal outburst by Chicago. Uh, but they have no one to blame but themselves. Two missed cues in their own zone cost them the first two goals. Let's take five seconds right now for station identification. This is TV 20, WXON, Detroit. Bruce Martin, Sid Abel, our producer Toby Cunningham here at the Chicago Stadium. The Blackhawks jumping out to a quick three to nothing lead. Wings a lot of time remaining. We're not yet to the 10 minute mark of the first period. Now Callahan of Chicago back out center ice drives a shot that Stefan deflects into the corner. Reed Larson chased it down behind the goal. Never did get to it. Stefan just sent it along the boards. Olchik drove a shot. Stefan slides across the front of the net to knock that away. Now here's Ron Duguay heading back down the ice over the line. Duguay checked by Olchik. The puck slides into the corner. O'Callahan goes in after it. Eisenman chasing him. Doug Wilson covers up. Wilson's pass knocked down by Duguay right out in front. Eisenman. Eisenman took a backhander. There's a penalty coming up to Chicago. On the delayed call, Sittler's drive is stopped by Bannerman. And a slashing call. My referee Brian Lewis will give the Red Wings a power play opportunity. What an opportunity Sittler had, though, to score. Yep. Red Wing fans, you can catch all the playoff actions as the Wings battle the Hawks. Tickets for the playoffs on sale now at the Joe Lewis Arena box office. So the next time you're at the Joe Lewis, stop by the advanced box office, pick up a reservation for next year's season tickets, too. But incidentally, there are still playoff tickets remaining for the games coming up Saturday and Sunday. They are offered as a package. But there are tickets still available for the games Saturday and Sunday only at the Joe Lewis Arena box office. The slashing call now to Troy Murray. And if the Wings ever put their power play together, they would like to see it click right now. Casio, Duguay, and O'Grodnick up front. Troy Murray got the slash for slashing at Iserman, and he really laid the wood on him. Now the puck slides right to the goal mouth, so Bannerman is going to hold on to it, and a face-off stays in the Chicago end. They have used up five seconds of the penalty time to Murray. There are no empty seats in this building tonight. There's just a steady din. Yep. Blackhawks have had two power play opportunities and scored on both of them. This is the Red Wings first. The Red Wings are 20th in the National Hockey League in killing off penalties and haven't helped it here in the first period. Here now Brad Park. Park holds it in along the blue line. Park still holding it. Park moves about 10 feet in from the line. Hands it back to Larson with a drive and Bannerman kicks that away. Kissio tried to work it to the line. Couldn't do it and it slides back into the Detroit zone and back after it now is Brad Park. Plays it in the corner deep in the Detroit end. The Larson with a minute 25 remaining in the Detroit power play. Kissio, Grodnick, and Duguay up front. Larson and Park. Reed Larson from center ice drives it in behind the Chicago goal. Bannerman came out of the net. Played it along the boards. Kissio held it in the corner. 
Kelly Kissio skates it along the circle. Here's Kissio handing it back to Larson. Larson had to play it off his skate, dumped it right out in front. Came back to Larson off the pass from Duguay, back to Duguay in the circle. Duguay in the corner now to John O'Grodnick, back to Duguay, and O'Grodnick off the rim of the circle. Duguay faked the shot, back to Larson. Larson drives it. The save made, and Kissio dropped. And the puck driven back down the ice. Kelly Kissio, what a great chance he had. And Bannerman just made an outstanding save. Well, you can't beat that. They had a good power play going. Now Eisenman's pass knocked away by Steve Ludzik. He's pinned in along the boards by Latticer. Eisenman goes in behind his own goal. 20 seconds remaining in the Detroit power play. Here's Steve Eisenman coming out center ice over the line into the Chicago zone. Eisenman pulls up at the circle back on the line to Brad Park. Park moves in with a drive and Bannerman grabs onto that and holds it. Well, Detroit are getting traffic out in front of him, but Bannerman really coming up with a couple of great saves. The one on the shot first by Larson, then the rebound of Kissios was just unbelievable. Larson took the shot. The shot, save was made. The puck came right back to Kissio. He whacked it the moment it hit the ice in front of him, but it was right back and hit Bannerman on the chest. Great save by Murray Bannerman. A couple of them, actually, in that little flurry that the Red Rings had going. There are 11 seconds remaining in Troy Murray's penalty. Well, goaltending always plays such a big part in the playoffs, and Bannerman, uh, of course, uh, their number one goaltender. Larson has had several shots. The rebound there was just perfect for Kissio, but Bannerman was there to make the save. Now the Wings win the draw. There's a shot by Latticer deflected into the corner. Eisenman's pass never came out, and out with it is Gardner. Will Gardner over the line along with Patterson into the Detroit zone. Goes right through and shot wide. Play stays in the Detroit zone, but the Wings will dig it away as Ivan Bolderev heads out. The penalty is over. Patterson takes it away. Has Gardner lose? Patterson with a shot. Oh. And Stefan came up with a huge save for the Wings. Eisenman back out now to center ice. Back over the Chicago line with a drive, and Bannerman kicks that away. Now Larmer heads back for Chicago. Up the left side to Troy Murray. Over the line into the Detroit zone. Slowed up by Greg Smith. Lattiser played it along the boards, but Larmer holds it in. Steve Larmer grabbed a bit by Greg Smith as they go into the corner. Secord digs it away. In behind the Detroit goal. Being checked by Sittler. The play, though, still deep in the Detroit end. Came out in front and Lattiser intercepts. Randy Lattice of Detroit steers it in behind his own goal. Now Boulder have center ice to Eisenman, but on a long time. Eisenman took the shot. Bannerman knocked that away. Bannerman's made some saves. Right back down the ice, Savard over the line into the Detroit zone. Barrett chases it into the corner for Detroit. John Barrett took a heavy bump from Seaport, but Barrett comes out with a puck. Now John Barrett comes center ice with it. Here's Barrett. Driving it into the corner in the Chicago zone. It came out in front of the goal. A shot by Gallant went just wide. Mano drove it back into the corner, but the Hawks cover up there, and DuPont will shoot it back into the Detroit zone. Went off a Red Wing stick, so there's no icing. Six minutes to play here in the first period. 3-0. Chicago. Boulder is dumped, and there's going to be a penalty coming up to Chicago. And Murray doesn't like this. Uh, this is about penalty and after oh. all. Uh, We'll be back with a Detroit power play in a moment. You're about to discover you have a weakness for sausage. Old-fashioned Polish sausage from Thorn Apple Valley. You can't resist how it looks as it begins to grill. Mm, look at that. You inhale the hickory smoked aroma. Mm, mm. And you relish the way Thornapple Valley combines select cuts and old world seasonings to create the most irresistible sausage it's ever. Taste. Hearty Polish sausage from Thornapple Valley. Even before you taste it, you know how good it's going to be. Well, Ivan Boulder have taken a play right at the blue line and trying to cut back, and Murray comes through. Although he got a stick pretty well uh, around Ivan's knee and upset Ivan. The ball up getting a penalty for tripping. Well, the wings were stopped by Bannerman, but made it rough on him the first time they had the power play. We'll see what they do now. Wings have possession back in their own zone. Banner, or rather Murray, for tripping at 14:02 as Dugay heads out. Now Duguay up the left side. Reed Larson drives it in behind the Chicago goal. Wilson takes it in the corner. Didn't get it out. He hauled O'Grotnick to the ice. And O'Callaghan takes the loose puck and shoots it back into the Detroit end. 
Stefan stops it in behind his own goal. A minute and a half left in the Detroit power play. 3-0 Chicago leads as Park heads out to center ice. Park ahead to Kissio. Kissio over the Chicago line. Drops it back for Brad Park. Park took the shot. That deflected off the back of the boards. Came right out in front of the net. Oh. Now Kissio and O'Callaghan. And O'Callaghan got the stick up in Kissio's face. Don Dugay moves in to grab on to Troy Murray. But O'Callaghan and Kissio started this. Then had it going. And a surprising thing. Both defensemen Larson and Park are staying back about 20 feet away from the uh, fight that's going on. So Detroit are in there fighting with three players against five. Well, maybe four. I think four, it's the man right. in the penalty box. Right. So they are all up on their skates now. This will be an interesting call by referee Lewis. Started between Kissio and O'Callaghan. Callahan really got the glove up in Kissio's face, jabbed away. Well, Kelly Kissio trying to deflect, or Dugay deflected Parks pass had come off the boards out to the front. Kissio was there, and first thing you know, the glove in his face, and that started it. Then other players got into it. Kissio got pushed in the face quite a bit. Dugay come to his help, and there was a little wrestling match. Dugay and Troy Murray. Brad Park over there shaking his head at referee Lewis as if he... Lutzig, I think, was the player that started it all. Well, they'll sort out the penalties. While they do, I'll try to get the voice back. And we have a minute 13 remaining in the first Chicago penalty. Three to nothing. The Hawks lead it. We'll be back in a moment. You could win $1,000 a week for life playing the new instant lottery game, Lifetime Deal. Pass it, please. Name? Spangler. Spangler? Spangler. $1,000, week after week. Your usual deposit, Mr. Spangler? Year after year. Cigar, Mr. Spangler. Morning, Ted. Morning, Ed. Mr. Spangler. Imagine how that could add up. Bye, Bye boss. Home, oh, Stanley. Which one, sir? Hmm. We are here at the Chicago Stadium. Each team has picked up a double minors. The Red Wings aren't too happy about it. Brad Park is out giving quite an argument to referee Brian Lewis trying to figure this one out. Detroit Red Wings. Well, tomorrow night, the Detroit Red Wings and the Blackhawks go right back at it here at Chicago Stadium. Again, broadcast telecast time will be 8.30. And we look forward to having you with us. Number 19, Troy Murray, five minutes for fighting. Number five, Jack O'Callaghan, two minutes for roughing at 14 to 49. Troy Murray gets five for fighting. Dugay, five minutes for fighting. Kissio, two minutes for roughing. Black Hawk families, Troy Murray, five minutes for fighting. Just offsetting penalties, Kissio and O'Callaghan, two apiece for roughing. Dugay and Troy Murray, and five apiece for fighting. The surprising thing about that, it was Kissio that was getting pushed around and had the glove in his face. Dugay went in. To, to actually pull a player away from the melee, and they wind up getting uh, fighting penalties, Murray and uh, Dugay. At any rate, what it means is the Red Wings remain at full strength now, and the Hawks still have the penalty to be served by Bob Murray, a minute and 13 seconds remaining. Brad Park and Reed Larson back at the point position, and now Brad Smith has come up to play the left side of the line. I kind of like to see him there. He can get out in front of that goal. Eisenman and Ogrodnik, the rest of the forward line, but the Hawks win the draw. In behind his own goal, Ben Wilson, he's checked right there by John Ogrodnik. Here's Eisenman in the corner. Tried to put it out in front, but it ended up in behind the goal. And the Hawks will take it and shoot it the length of the ice. 3-0 Chicago. Detroit has the extra man. 50 seconds remaining in the Chicago penalty. 4.45 to go now here in the first period. Here's Reed Larson leading the power play to center race. Again, driving it in behind the Chicago goal. Bounces along the boards. Gardner got there first. Gardner lost it to Ogrodnik. Put it right out in front, but Eisenman couldn't reach it. And the Hawks again scoop it back to the Detroit line. Reed Larson takes it. Larson lost it, taken away. Here now is Larmer moving in with a drive. Patterson it was over the top of the Detroit goal. Wings again handed it way back on their own end. Brad Smith in behind his own net. Plays it up the right side to Larson. Now Eisenman. Steve Eisenman over the line into the Chicago zone. Eisenman hands it back to Brad Park with a drive, and Bannerman got a piece of that one. Here's Eisenman out in front. Buck was knocked away by Chicago. Comes out center ice. 
and the penalty is all over. Bob Murray comes back on as it bounces into the Chicago end. Long pass broken off center ice by Larson. Bob Mano turns with it. Now Mano lost at center ice, knocked back into the Chicago end, and Secord will go back after it. Al Secord. Secord drops it off for Ben Wilson. Now Wilson shooting it back into the Detroit zone. Secord came right in after it. Shot it wide of the half empty Detroit goal, and the wings shoot it back to the Chicago line. The Hawks clear it back into the Detroit zone. Secord's pass ends up in the corner. Gallant goes in after it, but Savard holds it in. Here is Savard. Savard worked away from Gallant. Savard in behind the Detroit goal. Here's Savard bringing it right out in front. Savard winding up with a drive, and it was blocked by Foster. And Dwight Foster will head back. Now Foster from center A, scooping the puck back into the Chicago zone. In after it, Doug Wilson. Wilson's pass, Miss Secord comes out center ice. Greg Smith tipped it back in. Now the Hawks clear it to the Detroit blue line. Secord shot it into the Detroit zone. Loisel on for the first time. Here's Bob Mano. Mano flipped it back into the Chicago zone. Knocked down. Patterson's long pass broken off by John Barrett. Ahead now to Boulderev. Ivan Boulderev over the line into the Chicago end. His pass never got through and Sutter heads back. Center up the right side and cutting right in. You're up to four. Four to nothing. Well, you can't open up that much when you're down three and the wings gambling on a play deep in their zone. First thing you know, it's knocked away, and your rip truck took the play up through the middle. Defense didn't get back to cover, and first thing you know, he's in the clear. The puck was rolling on him. Again, a swisher right along the ice and through Greg uh, Stefan's legs, but you can't blame Greg Stefan on a play like this. He's back there by himself, but the puck was not kind to your rep, Chuck. It was up on edge. He had to fight it, and then he just swished it as he was going away from the net and put it in for a 4 nothing lead. This one comes at exactly 17 and a half minutes of this first period. Chicago into a 4 nothing lead, threatening to make a route of this hockey game. Here is DuPont back at his own blue line. Lozelle knocked it away from him. DuPont will take it in behind his own net. Sutter drew the only assist on the goal. Right back down the ice, Uremchuk chasing it. And this time, Greg Stefan came all the way out of the goal to play it away from him. Uremchuk and Stefan went at one another. And now John Barrett gets into it with Uremchuk. The other Chicago player hopped on top of Barrett. Uremchuk and Stefan, the referee was calling a penalty, but I don't know if it was on the goaltender or Uremchuk. I don't know. The tempers are flaring now. And... Uh... John he had Barrett. called a penalty. He had not stopped the play. But then John Barrett really came in after Uremchuk. Now, Uremchuk is going to fight now that the referee and the linesman are all there. He just stood there. He didn't want to mix it up with John Barrett. And Barrett did lay a couple on him. But now that they've got it pretty well separated, he decided to try and get back into it. Darrell Sutter right in the middle of it all. Well, John Barrett will take care of himself. Greg Smith holding off Sutter as Uremchuk now gets to his skates. They are a tough club here at home. Uh, they get this crowd just going for them. So we have further penalties. Uremchuk and Stefan were the two antagonists to begin it. Then John Barrett really went after Uremchuk. a case of Greg Stefan making a play way over in the corner. He made the play off the boards. Uremchuk and Stefan, well, Stefan gave him a high step. Uremchuk yeah. cut back at him and hit Greg. And then John Barrett went over and figured, well, he'll take care of things. And he laid a few in there. And first thing you know, well, everything started. That's what he should do in his goaltender. That's right. Robert. The only thing about a goaltender, Bruce, is when they get away out over the corners and whatnot, they are... Fair game. Fair game, then. If they're in the goal crease and you slash and bang at them, that's uh, their protective area right out in front of the goal crease. This is about as aggressive as I've seen Greg Stephan play this season. It, it is. And, you know, I don't know if the papers would have anything to do with it or not, but all day long, and every paper was saying they had to try and get Greg Stephan off his game by... Lose his cool, I think, they, the That's word. right, by, by causing things to happen in front of the net and make him lose his cool. 
Referee Lewis has made his decision, announced it to Sutter, the Chicago captain, Brad Park, the acting captain of the Wings. Two minutes for high sticking, five minutes for fighting. Blackhawk penalty number 15, Ken Yurumchuk. Two minutes high sticking, five minutes fighting at 17.56. Well, he's evening him up again. Five minutes for fighting and two minutes for high sticking to the two of them at 17.56. So he had evidently called the original penalty on Uremchuk. In the first period, it's the Minnesota All Stars one, the St. Louis Blues one. I'm sure that the Red Wings never dreamt they would come out and be down four goals here in the first period. I didn't either. And it all, nor did I. And it all started kind of innocently. A mis miscue behind the net. They get one, then another miscue, and they have two. And first thing you know, away it goes. Red Wing bench, I think, is a little unhappy. They're not making substitutions. The Detroit bench is very unhappy with something right now. Nick Polano taking his time, putting players out. Referee Brian Lewis in the middle of the confusion right now. They'll be offsetting penalties to Barrett and to Uremchuk. Two apiece for high sticking. Five minutes for fighting. So the teams come in at full strength. Don't miss the Red Wings in the playoff action at the Joe Lewis Arena Saturday and Sunday nights. Both games beginning at 8 o'clock. Incidentally, the Harlem Globetrotters are going to play their unique brand of basketball uh, preceding each playoff game. That'll be in the afternoon. So the other games, the evening games, start at 8 o'clock. And the tickets are on sale now, a two-game package at the Joe Lewis Arena box office. Now the play goes into the Chicago zone. The team's at full strength. The Hawks feed it back to the Detroit blue line. Lattiser gives it there to Brad Smith. Smith, a good pass ahead now to Agrodnik. Took a shot from the blue line. Bannerman has no trouble with that. O'Callaghan took it into the corner. Played it up the right side. And Larmer has Savard moving. Savard and Secord over the line into the Detroit zone. Here's Savard pulling up at the line. Plays it back to O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan right out in front. And Stephan made the save. And the puck grabbed to the side of the goal by Stefan. And now out in front of the net, Secord and Brad Smith. Two guys that don't wear helmets. And they are doing more wrestling than anything right now. Smith may have grabbed a little bit of hair. Oh, Smith is really no. laying on that now. Brad Smith got the right hand loose, but Secord gets his left loose, and he lands. And now Brad Smith tries to get back. If I were the two lines, but I think I'd get the heck out of there. So would I. They still push and shove with the two lines, but holding on to the two of them off to the side of the Detroit goal, and we may just have a whole evening of this. The only bad part of it is the Red Wings are down by four. Yes, they've got to they've got to stay on the ice if they ever expect to get back in a hockey game. Uh, they so, fight, and then they always have to say a few words to one another when it's all over. So Brad Smith heads down the corner to the Detroit dressing room. Secord skates the length of the ice to the applause of the crowd, and he'll go off. Well, this surprises me, too. These clubs have gone after one another pretty well all season long, but I didn't expect to have Not like all thing, these fights. No, this is the, uh, the first time this year that they've really had fight after fight just breaking out and uh, wrestling and whatnot. I show a total of 16 penalties, eight aside. But let me tell you, Greg Stefan had to come up with a big save just before this all broke out. The puck bounced right off the backboards, come out in front. Greg was really alert to turn around and grab it before anybody could poke it in. Brad Smith had Secord all covered up out in front of the goal. Secord gave him a little jab with the elbow, but he was just trying his best to get loose from Smith's check. And then they went at it off to the side of the goal, and they're both into the dressing rooms. Five minutes apiece for fighting. Still, it's four to nothing, Chicago. The teams remain at full strength on the ice. Reed Larson dumps it back into the Chicago zone. Larmer goes in behind his own goal. Now Larmer up the left wing to Fraser. Fraser along right side pass. It's Savard backed in ahead of the puck on the delayed offside. The Wings have the play back in their own end. Randy Latticer. Latticer lost control of it inside the, his own blue line, so they whistle it down on the offside finally. We've 
59 seconds to go here in the first period. And I don't know. I don't see a shot board, Bruce. They I don't, don't know have one here. They don't want it. Detroit have had a lot of shots yes, on net. Have. Bannerman has come up with a lot of big saves. There's only been one startling play uh, as far as a, a player. Uh, that was Savard at the time he circled around and finally walked in and Greg beat him. On television, Steve Larmer, prolific goal scorer, will be Sid's guest on television. All the sports of the day on radio. Play goes back into the Detroit zone. Greg Stephan stops it in behind his own net. With it now is Reed Larson. 45 seconds remaining to be played in the first period. Larson up the right wing to Bob Mano. Mano has Kissio over the blue line. Kelly Kissio pulls up along the boards. Kissio played it back to Lattiser. Randy Lattiser just scooped it in behind the net. Grabbed off there by O'Grodnik right out in front. A scramble after it. Here's Mano with a drive. He scores. Bob Mano digs it out of traffic. And the Red Wings are on the board. It's four to one. And that could be a pretty big goal for them. It uh, gets them on the board with just 29 seconds to go. Bob Mano. And there were three Red Wings there really taking their turns as to who's going to shoot it. Kissio knocked it back. Larson come in, but Mano circled back and beat Bannerman on the glove side. But Ogrodnik started the play behind the net. Kissio was all tied up, moved it back out of the circle. And Bob Mano fired it in. So Mano gets his first goal of the playoff series at 1931. John O'Grodnick more than likely to draw one of the assists. He and Mano were both in behind the net. Mano cut out in front, and O'Grodnick laid it out there. Now a long shot from center ice by the Hawks, grabbed off by Greg Stefan, and the wings shoot it back center ice. Doug Wilson clears it right back in. Ten seconds remaining here in the first period. Puck played off the glass to the center ice zone again. Brown has it there. Keith Brown lost it, taken away by Eisenman. But time is going to run out as the shot was fired. Oh. The Red Wings score. Larry Trader drove it in. He's but the light had come on. Oh, off the oh post. that green light had come on just prior to the shot being fired. And Larry Trader had scored. Perfect setup, and Larry Trader got everything on it and hit off. You could hear the post ring up here into the net, but the green light come on, and meaning the red light could not be lit, so the goal does not count. The Blackhawks 15. Detroit goal scored by number 23. The shots on goal in the first period, believe it or not, 18 for the Detroit Red Wings, 15 for the Chicago Blackhawks. It's a kind of a period it was, but when it was all over, the Chicago Blackhawks lead the hockey game by a score of four to one. In our first intermission, radio-wise, you'll be hearing the sports news of the day on television. Sid will be talking with his guest, Steve Larmer, live from here at Chicago Stadium. Let's pause for this. From Chicago Stadium, after one period of play, the Detroit Red Wings trail the Chicago Blackhawks by a score of four to one in this first game, the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Steve Larmer over the regular season, 46 goals and 40 assists, 86 points in all. And Steve right now joins Sid Abel. Steve, first of all, I want to congratulate you uh, on a, just a great season with your 46 goals, the most goals ever scored by a right winger. Did you really want to finish in first place? Well, that was really what we wanted to do right from the start of the season, but with all the injuries we had and, uh, you know, the coaching change and that, uh, we made a good run for it, and uh, we've started to play really well the last 20 games, and I think that's what we wanted to do more than to, than to get first place, was just to play well over the last half of the season and uh, prepare ourselves properly for the playoffs. Steve, what is the difference of coach? And now, you were 22, 28, and 3 under Orville Tessier. The change was made, and your general manager, Bob Pulford, a former coach for, and a former player in the National League, took over, and you just finished with a, just a great sec or a great last 16 7 and 4 under Bofer. Well I think the main thing is that uh, you know he's really given us the confidence to play and uh, you know we're just more confident playing with each other out there we know that the other person is going to do their job so we have to do our job and uh, we're we're working twice as hard. I've got to talk about this game I don't think anybody in their wildest expecta expectations would expect to come out and score four straight goals and take a four nothing lead. Well, you know, we were ready for this game, and, uh, you know, when the National Anthem was going on, the crowd was was going crazy, and that really lifted us, and, you know, the crowd in this rink is good for two goals anyway, and, uh, 
you know, we just wanted it really bad. We uh, forechecked really well, I thought. All right, Steve, on the first goal, I knew you drew an assist. Will you just tell us how that came about? Well, I think it was a power play on a four on three. And uh, Bob Murray passed the puck over to me. And then I flipped it right across the ice to Dougie Wilson. And with his shot from the top of the circle, there's not too many goaltenders that are going to stop him. If you weren't playing in Chicago, in the Chicago Stadium, do you have a favorite building in the National Hockey League that you uh, like to play? Um, I like playing in Minnesota also because of the rivalry with it, that we have with them, and uh, it's a nice rink to play in. I want to ask you this. You know, most go most guys that score a lot of goals have trouble scoring goals on the road. Your case is a little different. You scored 22 of your goals here at home, 24 of them on the road. Well, that was something at the end of last year that I really wanted to improve on because I didn't play that well on the road last year, and I wanted to change that all around this year, and uh, I'm pretty happy with you know, the way things went this year on the road for myself. Steve, thanks ever so much for taking time. Get your rest. Let's just hope we have a great series. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now let's come back to Bruce Martin. Okay, very intelligent young man and uh, pleasant to listen to, Steve Limer along with Sid Abel. It is four to one, Chicago leading Detroit after the first period. We'll be back in a moment. Oh, hi again here at Chicago Stadium. Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel, our producer, Toby Cunningham. The Red Wings trail this hockey game by a score of four to one. It's been said, I'd say, a game where the Red Wings played better than a four to one score would indicate. 18 shots for Detroit, 15 for Chicago would indicate that. Well, Bannerman come up big for Chicago, and Greg Steffen did not come up big for the Red Wings. Well, we'll take an opportunity now to look at the goals. The first was on a power play. John Barrett in the penalty box, and Doug Wilson scored. Well, Larmer and Murray passed the puck back and forth, and finally Wilson shot, and the puck went right through Greg Steffen's legs. Another look at it. Well, a good shot by Wilson, and uh, Greg didn't get the legs closed down, and it was shot from about 40 feet. Uh, Ludzik was trying to screen, but there wasn't a screen on the play. Now the Red Wings coughed it up. Larry Trader lost control, and cutting right into the net was Kurt Fraser. He banged it by, and at 4.47, just 21 seconds after Wilson's goal, the Hawks had a 2 to nothing lead. Savard made a rather patented Savard play on his goal. Well, I actually think he was going to throw the puck out into the traffic out in front of the net. And again, Greg Steffen didn't have his legs closed, and the puck was just swished in from the corner. The Sutter fed to Yaremchuk, and he drove one right through the skate or the legs of uh, Stefan. And Yaremchuk fought the puck all the way in, but did take the shot. The puck was rolling, and it went through Greg's legs again. 29 seconds to play in the uh, period. Well, here, another look at Yaremchuk's goal. As you say, he had to reach back, That's picked right. it up, and drove it by. It was at 19.31 that Bob Mano took the puck out of traffic, out in front of the goal. John O'Grodnick had sent it there. Well, Kelly Kissio made a play on it, kicked it back in the open, and it was a toss-up whether Larson was going to shoot or Mano. Mano shot the puck, and Bannerman had no chance at all, and the wings got on the board. And then, with just a half a second remaining, the puck came back to Larry Trader. He fired it by, but it was in the net a second after the period really had come to its conclusion. There was not much arguing that. Well, we have a moment to take a look now at our Shell Auto Care scoring summary. It was Wilson, Doug Wilson, from Larmer and Bob Murray at 426 on the power play. Fraser from Olchick at 447. Then Dennis Savard on the power play. Troy Murray and Doug Wilson at 836. Yaremchuk scored from Sutter at the 1730 mark. And then Bob Mano got the wings on the board from Kissio and Ogrodnik at 1931. So after a period of play, it is 4-1 to one as the Red Wings were out, or rather did outshoot Chicago 18-5, and five, but trail by three. That's the Shell Auto Care scoring summary where you get repairs back in writing. And we'll be back right after this. Live here at the Chicago Stadium as the Red Wings make their move out of the dressing room, up a flight of stairs, and out onto the ice surface here at the Chicago Stadium. They trail the Blackhawks by a score of four to one, but the Wings were coming on in the latter moments of the first period. We'll see if they can carry the momentum into the second. Let's take a look at some of the other scores around the National Hockey League tonight, and a lot of interesting games going. This, of course, the opening night of the first round the Philadelphia Flyers at home leading New York Rangers in the third period by a score of three to two New York Islanders in Washington all tied at three three in Washington that's in the third and the Boston Bruins right into the forum in Montreal lead the Canadians three to one after two periods of play 
Quebec Nordiques are leading the Buffalo Sabres in Quebec 3 to 2 in the third period. Minnesota and St. Louis at St. Louis 1 to 1 in the second. And Winnipeg has taken a 1 nothing lead over Calgary. That is in the latter moments of the first period in the game at Winnipeg. And not too many surprises no. in any of those games. Possibly the one Boston playing in Montreal and Boston with a 3 1 lead. Okay, we're about to get the second period underway. The teams remain at full strength, though John Barrett and Uremchuk still have about four minutes of their penalty time remaining, and Brad Smith and Secord a little over two minutes of theirs. But they were offsetting penalties, and the team substitute. Kissio comes out. He's got Nano over in the right wing now. John O'Grodnik on the left side. Brad Smith had been playing the other point, or rather the other wing. And Mano is there taking his spot. Savard, Gardner on the left side replacing Secord and Larmer. Now the puck slides back to the Chicago blue line. O'Callaghan flipped it into the Detroit end. Here's Gardner digging it out. Gardner hands it off. Puck knocked away by Mano, but the puck held in right out in front of O'Callaghan. Wide open, there were two Blackhawks out in front of Greg Stephan. And O'Callaghan got the pass and drove it by. Well, the Red Wings were just all out of position. Everybody chasing the puck carrier. First thing you know, there were two players standing out in front of the net, about 15 feet out in front. And there was, you take your pick, and O'Callaghan elected to shoot. He beat Greg Stephan on the, the, the blocker side. Five to one lead, and this is a big goal for Chicago, although a 4-1 lead was pretty nice, but to come out and score in the first 18 seconds of the second period. Both defensemen were parked right in front of the Detroit goal, about 10 feet out in front of Stephan. Both Doug Wilson and O'Callaghan. The pass came to O'Callaghan. He gets the goal. And the Hawks five to one. There's another drive deflected right to the Red Wing net by Fraser, and Stephan kicked that away. Back down the ice, Sittner, Eisenman. Eisenman took a drive. He crossed over the line. The save made. It's loose out in front. Eisenman backhands it right into the goaltender. That's unreal. Steve Adam Eisenman was down flat, and Steve just sent it right back into him. All he had to do was just put it up over Batterman, laying flat on his side. And the wings could have got right back again, but he deked over, and he had him going. And it's unbelievable that he didn't get it up high enough, but he put it right back in the bottom. The play, Dugay made a swipe at it and went right to Eiserman. Play come back out in front. Sittler was the one that pulled it and tried to deek the goaltender, but Eiserman decided to shoot it on his backhand, and usually you can put it up high on your backhand. He didn't get it up. So it remains five to one. The Hawks leading by four. The goal came at 17 seconds. O'Callaghan from Larmer and Gardner. Now Popper, he played it back to the line. It bounces into the Detroit zone. Reed Larson and Fraser. Fraser has Larson around the neck. Pulled his helmet off. It's a play loose in behind the Detroit goal. Troy Murray bumped there by Daryl Sittler. They still scramble after it. Olchick grabbed by Latticer. Still a wild scramble in behind the Detroit net. Larson without a helmet got it loose for Eisenman. Three on two the wings as Eisenman carries back over the line. Drops it for Sittler. It came all the way to Duque and bounced out center ice. Larson shot it back in offside and the faceoff comes out to the center ice area. So we play in a minute and a half of the second period. 5-1 Chicago will be back in just a moment. can't have it all Who says you can't have pinstripes and rock and roll Who says you can't taste life without it taking its toll Michelob Light Oh yes you can Michelob Light Oh yes you can Michelob Light Super premium taste in a less filling beer Michelob Light Oh yes you can Have it all these two teams, after tomorrow night's game, will head into Detroit on Saturday, and if a fifth or third, or fourth game is necessary, that will be Sunday. Both of those games at 8 o'clock at the Joe Louis Arena Saturday and Sunday. Now the play goes in behind the Detroit goal. They whistle it down on a delayed offside. We mentioned both of those games will begin at 8 o'clock, and the tickets are on sale in the two-game package. 
only at the Joe Louis Arena box office, or you can order by phone at 567 9 800. Well, a five game series, uh, one game uh, isn't the death knell for any, uh, anybody, so the Wings just know that they have a lot of work cut out for them. They were hoping they would win a game here in Chicago. Uh, looks bad for tonight. Now the play in behind the Detroit goal. Joe Kocher's on for the first time, comes up the right wing. Hands it back to Foster and Gallant coming up the left side and ahead of the play. It's offside. I know, Sid, that uh, a couple of the players, particularly Stevie Eisenman uh, and then Jim Fengeli and Bert Godin asked us and Steve Latin before the start of the game to make doubly sure that we gave our best wishes to Lane Lambert, who remained at home with that injured knee and how he'd like to be here. Yes, they said to Lane Lambert and to Dennis and Robin Krieger, too. Uh, I guess they're watching the game together, so... Uh... Now here's Larry Trader. His pass didn't come out. Knocked away by Lysiak. Gallant came back to cover up on Patterson. The wings swing it out center ice. Intercepted by Sutter. Darrell Sutter hands it back to Patterson. Patterson goes to the corner. Chased there by Park. Lay loose, though. Lysiak given a bump in along the boards by Park. Lysiak lost his stick to play in behind the Detroit goal. Foster went in after it. Sutter tipped it away from him. Now Park scooped it along the boards, and Gallant drives it but not out. Brown held it in. Park knocked down his centering pass. Brad Park ahead now to Foster. Up the right side, over the line. Coacher back to Foster with a drive. Bannerman made the save. But the Hawks pick it up, scoop it back out. And the play whistled down as the pass covered two lines. It's offside. Well, it's very important now that the wings score the next goal or or turn around and start playing defensive type of game. They can't give Chicago more goals and just build up their confidence to the point that they feel they can run right over top of them. So the wings are going to have to start playing their positions a little better. I figured about 50 minutes in penalties in the first period, 25 aside, they were all even. But the Hawks scored two power play goals. Here is Doug Wilson going in behind his own goal for Chicago. They lead by four, three minutes into the second period. Up the right side, Jack O'Callaghan into the Detroit zone. Checked right there. The wings come back with Mano. Bob Mano, he has the Detroit goal. Pulls up at the blue line. Mano holds it there. Went around Wilson. Tried to work it out in front, and Wilson knocked it away. Back on the right point, Larson holds it in. Larson with a long drive, knocked down out in front. Came right back to Larson. Another shot. He scores! Well, that just shows if they can get their shots. Bannerman didn't see that puck at all. It was shot right from the blue line like a bullet. And the Wings come back and pick up their second goal of the night. Larson with two shots from the blue line. The second one goes in for him. We, I don't know if anybody deflected the puck, but I didn't think so. There was a pile of players out in front. It appeared as though it went all the way in the short side. So the Red Wings now are down by three with a lot of time remaining in the hockey game. Play goes into the Red Wings zone. Savard bumped into his own man and Larson fires it up the left wing. Moving out with it, Bolderev ahead now over the line. Loisel, a shot deflected right to the net. Bannerman kicked it away. Bolderev shot. And that went right through and knocked away again by Bannerman. And he's been sharp in that Chicago goal. The Wings have made it tough. Here's Bolderev holding it in and he didn't do it. Taken away by Murray with a golden chance for Ivan Boulder out. The play goes into the Detroit zone offside. Oh, and the Wings could have got right back in the game. So it's 5-2. to two. Chicago leads on Larson's unassisted goal. We'll be back in a moment. There are two ways to open an individual retirement account. The hard way, waiting until tax time, finding enough money in the best rate, or the easy way, with an easy IRA from Michigan National. We'll automatically deposit money into an easy IRA from your checking or savings account all year long. So when tax time rolls around, your tax break is all set up. We'll even pay you an extra quarter percent. Come to Michigan National and open an easy IRA. We give you more money for your money. Think back to Eisenman's great chance. Boulder have had a big chance a moment ago. Bannerman made a heck of a save just prior to that. And Larry Trader's goal right when the yeah. clock uh, ended the first period. Buck sent back into the Detroit end offside right from the faceoff. Nearing the four-minute mark now of the second period. Five to two, Chicago leading by three goals. 
Penalties to Brad Smith and Secord are all over. Now the Hawks win the draw at center ice. Here is Bob Murray clearing it back into the Detroit zone. Stefan stops it in behind his own net. Brad Parks pass so intercepted by Lysiak. It came out to DuPont. Bounced in front of the Detroit goal. Kocher takes it. Up the right side now to Kissio. Kelly Kissio to Grodnick. Kissio up the left wing to Grodnick with a drive. And Murray got a stick on that. Deflected it way up into the crowd. J.P. McCarthy puts your mornings together. 6.15 to 10 a.m. on Radio 76 WJR. Your power station for sports and everything else that is Detroit. We've played four minutes, 18 seconds of the second period. Another one of the subtle Sutter brothers. The subtle Sutters? What, six of them, I believe, yep. in the league. Unbelievable. And they are all hard-nosed, good hockey players. Faceoff stays in the Chicago zone. Kissio won the draw. Here is Brad Park. Park dumped it in behind the goal. Grodnick sends it back on the blue line to Lattiser. Randy Lattiser's pass ends up in behind the net again. Slides along the boards. Park tipped it back to the line. Broken off there by Sutter. Now the wings take it again. Kissio's pass intercepted by Patterson. Slides back into the Chicago zone. The Hawks Brown sends it center ice. Park knocked it away. Joe Kocher has it. Now Kocher lifts it deep into the corner of the Chicago zone. Grodnick took the shot on the angle and Panderman just did cover up there and Keith Brown decked Grodnick in the corner. And Bannerman didn't realize that he had that puck. It was right on the corner. John O'Grodnick coming up in and picking up a puck off the backboards and getting rid of it just the moment he got there. Bannerman luckily covering the short side. Had he left a little opening, John may have had his first playoff goal. New York Rangers have come back to tie the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers led them three to nothing. But New York has come back with three goals in the third period, 3-3. Three, three. Now here's the play going in behind the Chicago goal, O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan played it out center ice, knocked away by Daryl Sittler, and Larson drives it right back in. Bannerman stops it in behind his own net. John, rather, Duguay took a crack from O'Callaghan in behind the goal. O'Callaghan is going to get a penalty, and Ron Duguay leaning over, holding on to that right ear. This could be a major penalty. We'll wait if Lewis goes over to check on the condition of the Detroit player. The linesman is going over there to take a look at Duguay. Now, this could be a major yes, penalty, and boy, would that be something for Detroit if indeed it happens. If Duguay isn't hurt that much. We'll be back. Let's pause for this. What has red ripe tomatoes, garden fresh lettuce, onions, mushrooms, seasoned salami, lean ham, layers of cheeses, and a dressing famous for its taste on buns baked fresh every day? What has 25 different varieties like steak, burger, or Italian made to order hot or cold ready in minutes? And what can be found in 32 convenient locations? What else? Tubby's famous submarine sandwiches. The last place you had a sub this good was here. Duguay following the play in around behind the net and took a chop by O'Callaghan right over his right ear by all appearances. It couldn't have drawn blood or there would have been a major penalty. A two-minute call to O'Callaghan for high sticking at five minutes and nine seconds. So the Red Wings have the face off in the Chicago zone. Duguay remains out with Kisiono and Ogrodnik up front. Eisenman and Larson at the blue line. Here's Steve Eisenman with a drive and Bannerman kicks it away. Buck off the boards, the Hawks slide it back out center ice. Kissio plays it back to Larson at the Detroit blue line. Five to two, Chicago leads. Steve Eisenman circles out in front of his own goal. Eisenman will turn it all the way in behind his own net, being watched by Ludzik. Now Eisenman starts out again, lifts it too far out in front of Kissio. The puck slides into the Chicago zone, but the Hawks clear at center ice. Ogrodnik has it there, slides it back to Detroit line to Larson. Eisenman, Steve Eisenman out at center ice to Kissio, back over the line into the Chicago end. Drops it off for John O'Grodnick. He ripped it in behind the goal, but Ludzik will go into the corner after it. Duguay went in, took it away from him, hands it back now to Larson. 
Larson back of the net to Kissio. Kissio in the corner to John O'Grodney. Still deep in the corner. They scramble in along the boards. Dugay gets into it. Wilson went in and upended Kissio. Here's Eisenman with a shot. Bannerman kicked that away. O'Grodney sent spinning. Puck held in at the line again by Eisenman. Into the corner now. Kissio left it there for John O'Grodney. Here's O'Grodney handing it back to Dugay. Back on the line to Steve Eisenman. Eisenman's shot was knocked down. Never got through. Larson holds it in. Larson played it in behind the goal. O'Grodnick battles Doug Wilson for it. Wilson's back on top of the puck. Play whistled down and a faceoff stays in the Chicago end. Well, Chicago doing a pretty good job of in the third modeling third Detroit third up on the outside. The wing's not able to get the puck out in the front where they can get a clear shot at Bannerman. Philadelphia's taken a 4-3 lead uh, over the Rangers, and Boston leads Montreal 4-3, both in the third period. Rebecca leading Buffalo 4 to 2. A lot of good hockey games going yep. on around the country. Red Wings still have the extra man for 37 seconds. The time remaining in the high sticking call to O'Callaghan. Foster comes up now with Dugay, or I'm sorry, with Bob Mano and Bolderev. The forward line for the Wings. Dugay won the draw, rather, Bolderev did. Here's Eisenman dumping it in behind the net for Mano. Mano played it along the boards toward the corner for Steve Eisenman into the circle. Eisenman took a shot way wide of everything. And the puck off the board slides all the way back into the Detroit end. Larson sends it rink wide for Steve Eisenman. Center ice to Foster. Left wing to Mano. Mano's pass to Bolderev. Bolderev lays it back to Larson. Larson in the corner to Ivan Bolderev. Bolderev lost control of it. And it's fired the length of the ice by Ben Wilson. The penalty is over. O'Callaghan is coming back on. Steve Eisenman carries to the blue line. Eisenman pinned off the puck right there by Larmer. Foster covers up. Here's Larson on the move. Reed Larson from the line with a shot that goes wide. Puck came off the boards. Right back down the ice is Larmer. He's got Savard with him. Larmer drove the shot and went just wide. Dupont plays it into the corner, but Larson will shoot it the length of the ice. And an icing call coming up against Detroit as the Wings wanted the player change. Well, you don't mind seeing them ice the puck when they do want to get a change of players. Five to two, Chicago leads. We'll be back. Let's pause first for this. Renault introduces America's best small car protection. Five, 50, plus. Five years or 50,000 miles plus required maintenance protection. Even better than Chrysler. Covers every new Renault, like a Lion sedan and sporty Encore. 550 plus on Renault Fuego, Renault Sport Wagon, and get America's lowest factory financing, 8.5%. Hurry, save now at your Detroit area Renault dealers. Let's take five seconds right now for station identification. You're watching TV 20, WXON Detroit. Bruce Martin, Sid Abel, our producer Toby Cunningham here at the Chicago Stadium. The Detroit Red Wings trail by three. Nearing the eight-minute mark of the second period, the Hawks have the play in the Detroit zone. A shot knocked down right out in front by Savard. Puck slides into the corner. Claude Loisel didn't get it out. Larmer holds it in. He was checked, though, by John Barrett. And Sittner digs it away. Sittner has it knocked down the first time. Barrett covers up again. Hands it back now to Greg Smith, and Smith shoots at the length of the ice. There'll be another icing call as O'Callaghan is back to touch it in the play right back into the Detroit end. Well, this line of Savard, Larmer, and Secor are just skating here, there, and everywhere. and They've got the wings bottled up deep. Baseball player Scott Sanderson of the Chicago Cubs in attendance at the hockey game here tonight. I wonder if he feels that there's not as many Cubs would get hit <laughs> as there would Blackhawks out on the ice or Red Wings. 11 minutes, 47 seconds still to be played here in the second period. Chicago Stadium, 5-2, the Hawks lead it. Took a 4-0 lead at the 17-30 mark of the first period. Sittler in against Savard. Buck came back to the line. Ben Wilson scores! Ben Wilson right from the blue line. 6-2. screen but whether Greg Stefan did not see it or not the faceoff was what 
sent back to the blue line, and the puck was rolling, and he got rid of it right the moment he got it back to the blue line, and he beat Greg on the short side. Well, a big face-off, one by Savard, and Wilson just fired the shot just inside the blue line, and it's now a four-goal lead again for Chicago. And the Red Wings call for icing as the puck is fired the length of the ice, and the Chicago crowd making noise. Well, you know, we've said all season long how important it is to win face-offs in your own zone because the other team get their players all in location to shoot the puck. And sure, sure enough, they won the face-off, scored the goal, and a big 6-2 lead here early in the second period. Secord evidently tipped the puck back to the blue line because he also draws an assist after Savard and won the faceoff. We're going to change goaltenders in the third Red Wings are. Rado Mikulov will come out and Greg Steffen goes to the Detroit bench. Well, this has not been one of Greg's good nights, but you, he has held this club in so often that you can't fault him. Corrado Mikulov comes on to play goal for Detroit in the second period at the 8 minute 29 second mark. Well, I think this, I'm not too sure I'm going to say, might indicate that Stefan will go back, rest up, and be ready for tomorrow, but I am sure if Mikulov plays that well, we may see him here tomorrow. Slid out in front of the Detroit goal. Here's Brad Park bringing it out. Down the left side, Dugay drove it deep into the Chicago zone. It was held in by Kissio. Played in behind the net. Taken off the boards now by Troy Murray. Golfs at center ice. Larry Trader's pass knocked down by Olchik. Here's Fraser over the line into the Detroit zone. Lays it back to Ben Wilson with a drive and a big save by Mikulin. Puck deep in the Detroit end. O'Grodnick takes it off the boards. Corrado Mikulin tested in a hurry. Now Duguay drops it off for John O'Grodnick over the line. He took the long shot. Hannerman knocks it down and holds on. I don't know of a player that shoots a puck better than John O'Grodnick. Now he's getting into a little bit of a... Well, Duguay uh, made a move at one of the Chicago players, and the other Hawk player, Ben Wilson, made a rink-wide move after Duguay, and then he takes another little slap at him. Well, when you have a 6-2 lead, you can do a lot of things. Uh... You can run over people and high stick and get away with a lot of things. It's a, but Corrado Mikkel have come up with a gem on the first save, a, a ben drive. Wilson. Ben Wilson from the top of the circle. And he had good wood on it. Corrado got the pad out, made the save. The referee Lewis not going to call anything this time. So while the two teams change players, we'll tell you there's a pause in the action. It is 6-2 Chicago. We'll be back in a moment. If you're having trouble cutting your lawn, you should know about Honda's Side Discharge Mower. It's easy to start, it's lightweight, so it's easy to use. And it's built so well, it may be the last lawn mower you ever buy. The Honda Side Discharge Mower. Buy one and leave your troubles behind. Anderson Sales and Service, Bloomfield Hills, Farmington Cycle World, just east of 275 on 8 Mile. We have 10 minutes, 52 seconds still to be played here in the second period at Chicago Stadium. The Hawks opening a four-goal lead. They have done that a couple, three times in this game. They let it four to nothing, then four to one, then five to one, five to two, and now six to two. Joe Kocher waited all that time, then decides he needs a new stick, goes back to the Detroit bench for one. Face off to the left of the Chicago goal. Gallant is on one wing. Eisenman at center, Kocher on the right side. Slid out in front of the Chicago goal. Dumped along the boards. Yeremchuk will take it there. Ah, here's Yeremchuk. Center ice. Lysiak tipped it right to the Detroit net. Well, it plays it along the boards into the corner. Gerard Gallant goes in after to head to Kocher. Now Joe Kocher. 
Kocher carries back into the Chicago end, failed to get around Dupont. Dupont and Kocher do some shoving, and they're going to go at it. They fought in Detroit the last game. Now, and the linesman tried to get in there. Kocher got a right hand in, another right hand in on the Chicago player, and Kocher is landing. But I hate to he's see him land because hand. he's got that hand that is so bad. And he can't, he doesn't swing with the good hand. It's always the bad hand. The right hand, they're still going at it. The two linesmen standing back. Dupont lost his helmet. Kocher has his still on. Kocher grabbing some hair and hauls his man down. I don't know if that's legal or not. Uh, well, these two guys, you recall, I think it was Dupont that he hurt his hand on. That's was right. out of the game the other day in, in Detroit's Joe Louis Arena. And you take a look at his hand, Sid. It's scarred up so badly where he's had surgery that he should not be doing this. He had two fights in the last game with Dupont. He had one in the first period, one again in the third period. And here he is again having another fight. And he's got a, a terrible looking hand. And it's the hand that he does all the punching with. Well, he landed most of them in this one. So the two of them will be heading off. It is a four-goal lead for Detroit, rather for Chicago over Detroit. We'll be back. Let's pause for, for this. Got me a case of the 501 Blues. Here from my waist right down to my shoes. You ain't got it, not like me. It's my strength to fit permanent identity. I Legendary 501 Blue Levi's Bud Light. Brought to you by J.C. Penny, your headquarters for Levi's 501 jeans. Five minutes for fighting. So the two of them draw five minutes apiece for fighting at nine minutes and thirty-six seconds. In the third period, it's the Quebec Nordiques five. Well, Kocher tried to put the puck in through Dupont's feet, and then... Yeah, but he was going after him. Yes, yeah. then they run along the boards, and they both had their sticks in one another's face. <laughs> a little sparring, and... Uh, Minnesota North Stars have taken a 2-1 to one lead over the St. Louis Blues in a game being played at St. Louis, which really doesn't surprise me that much. The Wings flip the puck into the Chicago zone, a delayed offside. They bring it out over the line now as a whistle stops it. New York Islanders and Washington are all tied 2-2 in the second period. Tomorrow we'll be with you at 8.30 from here at Chicago Stadium with again the second game between the Red Wings and the Blackhawks. Something about playing in this building at uh, the noise and the crowd uh, behind this Blackhawk team. They skate so much better here than they do on the road. But yet they had a pretty good road record this season. Teams remain at full strength. The play comes back out center ice. John Barrett has it there. Bolderev on the left wing now with Mano and Foster. Here's Savard. His pass knocked down by Barrett. He cleared it ahead to Mano and it's gloved by Barrett right back to Mano. So... Play stopped at center ice as we're right about the 10 minute mark. Out of town, Winnipeg leading Calgary 1 to nothing at Winnipeg in the first period. Los Angeles and Edmonton getting started about now. Minnesota leading the St. Louis Blues 2 to 1 in the second period. Boston out to a 5 to 3 lead over Montreal now in the third period at Montreal. Quebec leading Buffalo 5 to 2 at Quebec. Then a 4 to 3 lead Philadelphia over the Rangers in a game in Philadelphia. Philadelphia have been knocked out three years in a row, actually swept this in each series. Ivan Bolderev fires a shot wide. Greg Smith held it in at the blue line, back of the net to Foster. Foster dumped it into the corner. Bolderev returned it in back of the goal again. Secor takes Mano in. They whistle it down, and a faceoff stays in the Chicago zone. We have a few notes. Jeff Rubin and Allison Weiser want to say hello to Chuck Dan and David Knoll. So don't miss the Red Wings playoff action as it comes back to the Joe Louis Arena Saturday and Sunday. The games begin at 8 o'clock. Tickets on sale in the two-game package at the Joe Louis Arena box office. Or you could order by phone at 567-9800. Now the puck sliding in behind the Chicago goal. Ben Wilson played it along the boards. Barrett moved in to hold it in. Ben Wilson went after Barrett with the gloves up high. 
Faceoff will stay in the Chicago end again off the rim of the circle to the right side of Murray Bannerman. The wings outshot Chicago 18 and 15 in the first period, but had just a late goal by Mano with 29 seconds remaining in the period to show for it. And there's the difference in goaltending. Uh, Greg uh, coming up with a, an off night, uh, very strange for him because he's been hotter than a pistol. But coming up a little on the cool side tonight, and Bannerman in the meantime making big saves for Chicago. Foster, Boulder, Evan, Mano, the forward line of the wings with Greg Smith and Barrett. Gardner, Patterson, and Ludzik up front for Chicago. Again, they take it right to the boards, hold it there, and again, we'll have a face-off in the Chicago in with their gaining yardage. They're about five yards out. We have some more people here. Greg Roll and Doug Long want to say hello to the Red Wing Forum Club back in Detroit. And Ray Lemus wants to say hi to the group at Stenko's. Mike Roberts, hello to the friends, his friends in Allen Park. Six to two now, Chicago leading Detroit. Nine and a half minutes to play in the second period. We've had trouble getting things going here. Boulder have right from the faceoff fires a shot that Bannerman knocks down. Brown plays it along the boards. Here's Gardner coming out center ice. Barrett, the only man back, and Barrett took it away from him. Now John Barrett slides at center ice for Mano. Buck went loose at the Chicago line. Covering up there was Patterson. Now Patterson comes out center ice. Rich Patterson to Gardner over the line. He played it behind Ludzik. Greg Smith bumps Ludzik in along the boards. Now Greg Smith skates in behind his own goal. Up the left side for Bolderev. Ivan Bolderev hands it back to Barrett. Barrett played it off the boards. Took a high stick from Fraser. And then bats it back into the Chicago end as the Red Wing bench yells at the official. Right back down the ice, Bob Murray. Patterson moved into the Detroit zone, and Larry Trader met him. Buck again slides back out center ice. Doug Wilson takes it there. Now Wilson drives it right back into the Detroit zone. Came off the boards, back to the Chicago line. Bob Murray. Play broken away at the Detroit line by Brad Park and taken away at Park. Covered up on Troy Murray. Ahead to Kissio. Kissio, Grodnik, and Brad Smith. Here's Kissio. His pass deflected away. Came out in front of the Chicago goal, but Troy Murray takes it in behind his own net. Heads back down the ice for Chicago around Kissio. Over the line, Troy Murray trying to work through. Goes to the corner, chased by Trader. Laid it along the boards on the right side, but Kissio will bring it back out center ice. Kissio gets it over the line. Kissio hooked from behind. Couldn't pull away from Ben Wilson. Now Fraser heads back. Kurt Fraser into the Detroit zone. Fraser hands it off. Murray scores. Oh. It was oh. And Olchik driving in scores the goal. A pretty passing play, three-way passing play. And Olchik scoring just as he was being checked from behind. He wants to go after somebody. But that was a pretty, that's the prettiest passing play of the night. Three-way passing play. Fraser starting it. Back Fraser, back to Olchuk. Olchuk on a backhander. I think Mikola had to stick up high. Could have been. But it was a case of Fraser to Olchuk. Olchuk being checked from behind by Brad Smith, but he got a shot away on a backhander. And I think that's what started it all. He was while he was flat on his back, Trader's skate hit him on the back of the head and got him upset. But a 7-2 lead now with still 7.40 to go. We've had nine goals in this game. No two players scored more than one. Fraser and Keith Brown draw the assist. Chicago leads by five. About seven and a half minutes to play here in the first, or rather the second period. Reed Larson clears it ahead. Duguay goes over the line with Sittler. Sittler's return pass didn't get through. Duguay knocked it back to the blue line. Lattice who shot it in behind the Chicago goal. Fraser will take it, and Fraser didn't get it out. Duguay held it in, drives the shot that deflects wide. 
Kopchik lifts it high in the air back into the Detroit zone and Larson is back after it. Here's Reed Larson coming out center race over the line into the Chicago zone. Goes to the corner. He's hit there by O'Callaghan and Troy Murray has it. Murray pulls away from Sittler's check and comes out center ice. A long left side pass hit the linesman when it's touched by the Chicago forward Fraser. It's a two line pass offside. You know, when you get behind like this and you're behind by five goals, you forget about playing position. The Red Wings now are just chasing in, and every time you look up when the Chicago team gets a, a hold of the puck, Everybody's in the clear. John O'Grodnick will be talking with Sid in our second intermission on television. Mickey Redmond and Bruce Hood will provide another little session of You Are the Ref. The news will be coming your way on radio. Now Claude Loisel centers Boulderev on the left wing and Bob Mano on the right side. Loisel won the draw. John Barrett dumps it off to the side of the Chicago goal. The Hawks decor took it off the boards, clears it down the ice off the stick of Boulder out, so there's no icing. Barrett being chased by Larmer, tipped it into the corner. Savard shot it in behind the goal. Mano will take it. Now Bob Mano. His pass knocked down, slides out center ice though. Loisel hands it ahead to Boulder out, back into the Chicago end. Boulder out to Mano, back now to Greg Smith. And that's broken away and slides back to the Detroit line and back after it's Smith for the wings. Greg Smith retreats all the way in behind his own goal. Gives it there to John Barrett. Center ice to Mano. Now Bob Mano back over the line. Worked it away from Ben Wilson. Loisel hands it back to Mano. They struggle in along the boards. Mano and Secord. Boulder have dug it away. There's nobody out in front of the goal. All three wing forwards are over on the boards. And the Hawks come right back with Savard into the Detroit zone. Greg Smith took him off the puck. Noizel took a whack at it. Covering up Greg Smith. In behind his own goal. Secord all over him. Smith hands it back now to John Barrett. John Barrett still deep in the Detroit zone. The wing's a little disorganized right now. Clear at center ice. Doug Wilson drops it off. And here's Yurevchuk. Yurevchuk worked around Barrett. Goes off the circle. Yurevchuk right to the goal mark. Slides to the far side. Doug Wilson's pass held in now by Lysiak. Here's Yuremchuk moving out in front and brought it all the way back to the blue line. Gives it to Lysiak with a drive. And Mikulov got in front of that and made the save. The Wings still fail to get it out. Now Boulderev intercepts. Boulderev hands it off to Barrett. John Barrett a long shot. Bannerman kicks that away. Back down the ice. Yuremchuk, he's turned around, goes back into his own end. Yuremchuk in behind his own goal. 4.50 to play, second period. Puck knocked away by Brad Smith. Yuremchuk picks it up a second time. Brad Park knocks it down at the Detroit line. Foster into the Chicago zone. Right Foster trip. And a penalty coming up now to Doug Wilson. The Red Wings will have the extra man. Somewhere along the line now, the Wings get another chance on a power play. Chicago have scored two tonight. D uh, Dwight Foster with a... Good head of steam coming straight down the middle. There's no doubt about this penalty. Wilson getting the stick into his legs, upending him. That's a real National League trip by all means. A tripping call at 15 minutes and 24 seconds. The Red Wings have not been able to score with a power play. The Hawks had two in the first period. You know, with a big lead, it's so much nicer to skate and everything. You're just free and easy and doing uh, crisscrosses and drop passes and everything. And the wings, in the meantime, can't get anything going here in the second period. They had a good first period, had a lot of scoring opportunities, but they have not had the real good chances here in the second period. So the face-off will take place to the left side of the Chicago goal, tended by Murray Bannerman. Duguay, Kisiono, Grodnik, Larson, and Eisenman, the power play combination for the wings. Duguay won the draw, but the Wings didn't get to it. Larson held it in at the blue line. Hands it off to Kissy with a drive and a rebound. After Bannerman made the save, he stopped Duguay. Oh, a great opportunity for Detroit, and Bannerman was right there. And he's held the hot hand here tonight. Steve Eisenman back in his own zone. Eisenman turning away from Gardner's check. Eisenman trying to pull away from Gardner. Comes out center ace. 
They head to Dugay. Here's Ron Dugay up the left side. Ogrodnik over the line. Has it back to Dugay with a shot. And he didn't get anything on it. It just floated up to the net, and Bannerman holds on to that. Well, you know, Bannerman's come up with so many big saves when the Wings have had their scoring chances, though Detroit have not had the opportunities that Chicago have had. But when they've had chances, they've had good chances. But Bannerman has made the big saves. Dugay, a great chance he had. Well, Kissio got, Kissio got rid of the puck. And Dugay, I think, even got a little deflection or a little part of it. But he was in awful close and couldn't get it up high enough. Dugay with this last shot was a floater from out about 25 or 30 feet that Bannerman had no problem with at all. Well, the New York Islanders and Washington have gone into overtime at Washington. You don't count those Islanders out. That's 3-3 right in Washington. Calgary leading Winnipeg now by a score of 4-1 in the second period. Here's Kissio moving out in front again. Off the side to Ogrodnik with a drive. And Bannerman came out, cut the angle, and stopped that. Wings have the extra man for a minute and five seconds. Larson is in behind his own goal. Wings are getting chances here now as Eisenman back into the Chicago zone. Steve Eisenman pulls up along the boards, had it knocked away. Back of the net, Kissio into the corner to Dugay. Along the board, Steve Eisenman. Eisenman back on the line to Ogrodnik to Eisenman off the circle. Steve Eisenman holds it there. Eisenman drove a shot, and Murray got a stick on that and deflected it way up into the crowd. And John Ogrodnik's shot there just a few moments ago from the angle uh, just off to the left of the net. I don't know, but maybe he hit the post. I thought I heard a ring of the post. But Eisenman, or Bannerman, may have beaten him. I'll be talking to John between the second and third, and I'm going to ask him if, uh, if Bannerman beat him on that shot or whether it hit the post. The wings, though, are down by five, and I'm sure that they're hoping to try to stop Chicago from scoring more goals and see if they can just pick away. Face-off stays, the rim of the circle off to the right of the Chicago goal. Dugay, Kissio, and Ogrodnik, Eisenman and Larson. Dugay played the puck in toward the corner, goes chasing in after it. Pinned in along the boards by Ben Wilson. It's back of the net. And the Hawks gain possession and shoot it to length of the ice. Steve Eisenman will come back after it. 25 seconds left in the Chicago penalty. Now Eisenman out of his own zone. The left side to Reed Larson. Larson back over the line. Here's Larson, a backhand shot. And Bannerman traps that on the pads and holds on. And that just about went through. A knee high shot. Bannerman come out to cut the angle. Reed had to shoot it off his backhand. Larson showing a lot of stick handling ability. He is a real good puck carrier. Boston well, have defeated Montreal in Montreal, five to three. That's and that's a fourth final. place team beating a first place right. team. Red Wings trail by five here, a little less than three minutes to play in the second period. 16 seconds remaining in the penalty to Doug Wilson. Detroit with the extra man, and they have the face-off deep in the Chicago zone. Boulder out, Foster and Gallant up front for Detroit now with Trader and Park. Boulder have won the draw. Trader's shot never got through. Ben Wilson just laid it back to the line. It hits the glass and slides all the way back into the Detroit end. Brad Park comes back after it. Here is Park getting out ahead to Trader. Now Larry Trader up the right side over the line into the Chicago zone. Trader slid it right through the goal mount. Penalty is over. The Hawks are at full strength. Ben Wilson back in his own zone. Scoops it back into the Detroit end and Park hurries back after it being chased by Larmer. Hands it rink wide to Larry Trader. Trader ahead. Foster bounced away from him, and Brown starts back. Brown clears it into the Detroit zone. Savard dug it after it, and they score. Go it. Yes. 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 Detroit give up on this play. The puck went in the corner and it was just a case of, I believe, Savard out racing anyone to the yep. puck and then he laid it just across in front of the goal and Larmer coming in all by himself. He just outraced Detroit to the puck and then Larmer was all by himself coming in 
He wasn't picked up, but he had no trouble scoring. Nikolov had no chance there. Just an innocent play off the boards where Chicago outskated Detroit and come in and picked up the puck. So now it is eight to two. Play goes in behind the Detroit goal. We have two minutes to play here in the second period. The Hawks gain possession in the Detroit zone. Knocked down by Sittler. Daryl Sittler overskated it, so Seacord shoots it right back in. This will be an icing call. No, if the Wings get there be. first, Savard took it away. But Sittler intercepts. Sittler clears up the right side. Kocher got to the blue line. Doug Wilson stopped him. Back after it, Greg Smith. A minute and a half to go here in the second period. Eight to two, Chicago. Hawks have possession. Bob Murray up the left side for Sutter. Lysiak holding it in. It came center ice, and DuPont brought it back in offside. Well, Detroit's all disorganized now. Chicago are just uh, skating and doing what they want to do. Secord drew the other assist on the goal, along with Savard, who made the pass out. Ten goals scored in this hockey game, and nobody has a double. Ten different players have scored goals. Faceoff will be just over the Detroit blue line tomorrow night. The Wings will try to put it back together against these same Blackhawks here in Chicago. When you fall behind four to nothing in the first period, it's kind of tough. Greg Smith drives it up the left wing and bounce beyond John O'Grodnick. Now DuPont clears it ahead for Yeremchuk. Yeremchuk fanned on the pass, so Grodnick knocked it back into the Chicago zone. Yeremchuk will bring it out again. This pass knocked down by Brad Smith to O'Grodnick out in front. He scores! Well, John O'Grodnick finally taking a nice little play from Brad Smith. Right along the ice, beat Batterman on the long side. To make it an eight to three game. Here's a case where Yurimchuk coughed the puck up in his own zone. Brad Smith kept it in, took, made a play across to Grodnick, and John has had many times has had harder shots than that, but he picked the right spot right along the ice. You know, Brad Smith had an outstanding training camp, but they sent him right to Adirondack and didn't bring him up till the Adirondack season was over. He scored a goal in his first game last or uh, two nights ago in St. Louis. Scored another one here tonight. No, he didn't. I'm sorry. That was he has, Nano. He has, but he, he, set, he set the one up. Right. Now here is the puck bouncing back out to the center ice area. Taken away. Troy Murray back in. Hands it off to Olchick. Broken up in front of the goal by Lattice. Randy Latticer skates in behind his own goal. Latticer a right side pass. Dugay tips it ahead to Kissio. Kissio lifts it into the Chicago zone. O'Callaghan dug it out, played it up from the left side to Fraser. Kurt Fraser feeds it ahead to Troy Murray. Now O'Callaghan over the line into the Detroit zone, and Latticer knocked it away. Olchi giving a bump in along the boards by Reed Larson. They're going to hold it there with five seconds to go in the period. Kissio drew the other assist on O'Grodnick's goal. Well, this is something that John didn't do in the four games that were played last year. He missed the last 16 games of the season because of a broken hand or arm come back and played the playoffs but didn't play the way John O'Grodnick can play because of his injury and didn't score a goal or even get an assist on a goal. So the Red Wings are down by five, eight to three, five seconds to go in this, the second period. Eisenman will take the face off in against Lysiak deep in the Detroit end to the left of Corrado Mikulov. Or rather, Eisenman won the face off, and Reed Larson drives it in behind his own goal, and that eats up the rest of the time as the siren goes to end the second period of play here at Chicago Stadium. So the Detroit Red Wings falling behind four to nothing in the first period. Came back, made it four to one, but trail after two periods by a score of eight to three. 
Believe it or not, in that second period, the Red Wings again outshot Chicago 15 and 8. The Red Wings have had 33 shots in two periods, the Blackhawks 23, but the Hawks lead it by a score of 8 to 3. We'll be back with our between periods information after we pause first for this message. led by Corrado Mikola filing out of their dressing room prior to the start of the third period. Not a particularly happy first two periods for the Red Wings who trail by a score of eight to three. The overtime game, Islanders playing at Washington in overtime. Hayworth has scored at 228 of overtime to give Washington a four to three win. New York Rangers and Philadelphia Flyers are 4-4 playing overtime. And Washington, as I mentioned, 1-4-3. Boston had won the game for Montreal, 5-3, that game in Montreal. Quebec have defeated Buffalo, 5-2, that game in Quebec City. Los Angeles and Edmonton, 1-1 on one the first period. One more score. Uh, Winnipeg and Calgary are now four to four in the third period. Oddly enough, 11 goals in this hockey game, and no players scored more than one. Doug Wilson, Fraser, Savard, Yaremchuk, O'Callaghan, Ben Wilson, Olchik, Larmer. The goal scorers for Chicago: Ogrodnik, Mano, and Larson for Detroit. Teams are at full strength as the third period is about to get underway. Savard, Seaford, Larmer up front for the Hawks. Detroit with Kissio, Brad Smith, and John O'Grudman. Here now Jack O'Callaghan driving it in behind the Detroit goal. Larson chases it down in the corner. Up the right side, Brad Smith scoops it ahead for Kissio. Knocked away though, and Steve Larmer's pass deflected the right to O'Grodney. The head now to Brad Smith. Smith with a drive that went over the top of the goal. Held in at the blue line by Latticer. He played it into the corner. Smith put it right on in front, came back to the line. Latticer gives it to Larson. In the corner to Kissio. His centering pass broken off. Now Secor. Ahead to Doug Wilson. Wilson drives a shot over the top of the Detroit goal, a bouncing puck. And Larson finally knocks it down and plays it. Reed Larson drops it off now for Randy Latticer. His pass covered two lines to Kissio. Offside and the play back inside the Detroit Blue Line. One score that we failed Minnesota playing at St. Louis. Minnesota have a two to one lead at the end of the second period. Ron Duguay with Eisenman and Boulder have now the forward line of the wings. Larry Trader and Brad Park. Troy Murray, Fraser, and Olchik up front for Chicago. Here's DuPont driving it back in the Detroit goal. Mikolov stops it there. Mikolov himself played it off the glass. They jam it in along the boards. It slid back into the corner. Eisenman in after it. Steve Eisenman. His pass knocked away. A centering pass. Park knocked it down. DuPont holds it in at the blue line. Played it in behind the goal. There's Patterson with it. Patterson brought it right out front. Or rather, Olchik it was. And slid it just wide. Another shot fired from the side goes just off target. The Hawks right now holding the play in the Detroit zone. That bounce right to Mikolov. He's going to hold on to it with Olchik moving in on top of him. Well, Chicago have found that if they forecheck in deep, they can cause Detroit problems, and they are moving all three forwards right in the area of the net. Defensemen are moving well inside the blue line, and they've just kept Detroit hemmed in. Face off will stay in the right side of the Detroit goal. Mano now with Galan and Foster, the forward line of Detroit. The Hawks have Lysiak, Sutter, and Yurupchuk up front. 8-3. Chicago leading by five. Greg Smith, John Barrett back along the wings defense. Ben Wilson and Keith Brown for Chicago. Now Greg Smith digs it out of traffic, carries it out to center ice, lifted it to the Chicago line, and Yurupchuk comes back after it. Yuremchuk played it too far out in front of Sutter. That's going far enough for an icing call. And the play will come back into the Chicago zone. Eight to three, the Hawks lead it. We'll be back in a moment. 
What would you call a bacon so full of flavor it comes sliced extra thick? Corn Apple Valley. A bacon prepared with butcher shop seasonings and cured over real hickory chips. Corn Apple Valley. What would you call a bacon that sizzles and browns and sends off an aroma that will make your mouth water? Corn Apple Valley. You'd call that bacon a delicious taste of country. But you can't taste the bacon unless you call it by name. Thorn Apple Valley. Chicago got off to a 4 to nothing lead in the first period, and they have carried it since that time. Rado Mikulov replaced Greg Stefan in the Detroit goal about eight and a half minutes into the second period. Now your Remchuk of Chicago had trouble with John Barrett. Barrett tipped it into the corner in the Chicago end. Foster all tied up by... Here's Lysiak kicking away at it. Dug away by Gallant. Gallant tried to lay it back to the blue line, but Yeremchuk and slides it back into the Detroit zone. Greg Smith will play it in behind his own goal. Now Smith, the right side pass to Mano. Bob Mano over the line into the Chicago zone. Drops it off for Foster, knocked away from him. And Foster has to come back to his own blue line. Hands it there to Greg Smith. Sutter. Knock Foster to the ice. Here's Mano back over the line. And he put Gallant offside. The play will come back out over the Chicago blue line. I believe before this series started, everybody was saying that goaltending would probably be the, the big thing. Uh, and Detroit had a hot goaltender, and Detroit came in with two hot goaltenders, but Greg didn't have his big night, and uh, Chicago jumped all over them early in the first period, and they just carried it through. Dwight Foster giving a pretty good bump here. Well, Dwight was going to take a little deep, and Sutter just stopped and played the body. Now Doug Wilson, a long pass, center ice to Ludzig. Ludzig tips it back into the Detroit zone. Joe Kocher giving chase to it, laid it into the corner. The Hawks will play it there. Larmer's pass knocked down, and Sittler brings it back. Darrell Sittler leads a three-man rush for Detroit. Larson carried over the line into the corner for Sittler, right through the goal mouth. But Vanderman got a stick on it, deflected it away. Steve Ludzig of Chicago. Up the right side now it comes. Shoved off the puck was Lar or rather Patterson and bounced down center ice. Boisel kicking away at it along with Steve Ludzig. They stop it and a face on stays now in the center ice area just past the three-minute mark of the third period. And you can see just how fired up the Chicago Hockey Club uh, is tonight. Every player on the bench standing up watching the play coming out along the boards. They are in it on every move that goes on. John O'Grodney, Kissio, and Brad Smith now, the forward line of the wings. Secord, Savard, and Larmer up front for Chicago. Here's Larson. Of Detroit carrying back in, but Kissio moved in ahead of the play, offside. Tomorrow night we'll be with you at 8.30 right here from Chicago Stadium. The Red Wings and the Hawks, the second game of the best of five playoff series. Both radio and television, and then it'll return to Detroit Saturday and Sunday. Those games will be starting at 8 o'clock. And the package, tickets for both Saturday and Sunday on sale now at the Joe Louis Arena box office. Center ice, a long shot by Larson, stopped easily by Bannerman, Al Secord. Play broken up center ice this time by O'Grodnik, slid all the way to Mikulov in the Detroit goal, and Lattiser turns with it. Kissio takes it off the boards, Kissio dumping it back in. Here now is O'Grodnik chasing it down, lifted it over the top of the goal, put it out in front, Kissio took the shot, Bannerman stopped it. Lattiser a drive, and that's knocked away by Bannerman. Hurt, I believe. He's still down on his hands and knees. Getting up very slowly, but boy, he came through with a couple of dandies. Here's Larson coming right back for Detroit. Drives a shot from center oh, ice. Oh, he can't be hurt and too much. Was hurt. He didn't show it there. He reached out and grabbed well, that. Now one. he's flat on his back. He was hurt, but what a glove save he made. But he has come up so big and time and time again when the Wings have had their chances. The Chicago trainer coming out to talk to his goaltender, Murray Bannerman. He was on the injured list. Came back, played the last game of the season. But what a save on Reed Larson. Larson just crossing the blue line and really rifled it right from the blue line. 
and a stretch and a glove save by Bannerman, but that is the, but prior to that is when he did get injured. The puck was everywhere around the net, back and forth. Kissio tried to get it, went to a little backhand. He just dished it up in front of him, and Bannerman was just caught in the traffic, I believe, although the shot looked as though it come off the top crossbar. Minnesota's taken a two-goal lead over St. Louis now. They lead that one three to one in St. Louis. Well, Minnesota were playing games in the last 10 days or two weeks of the season. And St. Louis may have just overlooked them. But... Duguay, Eisenman, and Bolderev up front now for the wings and Brad Park and Larry Trader. Play off to the right of the Chicago goal. Troy Murray will go in against Duguay. We've played almost four minutes of the third period. Eight to three, Chicago leads it. The linesman, Bob Hodges, waving Murray out. Olchik comes in now against Duguay. The Hawks win the draw. Here's Ben Wilson up the left wing to Kurt Fraser. Fraser stopped by Brad Park. Taken away by Olchik over the line. Here is Olchik cutting in. He scores! Cleanly. This game is going to go into double figures here by all appearances. 15 53 to go. Olchik gets his second goal. He's the first man to get two. Well, he just came in on the angle and he snapped it. And but Grotto appeared to go down a little too early on the play and he put it right up under the top crossbar. But a very talented young American right from Chicago. Well, young Ed Olchek, more than likely an unassisted goal at 4.07. The first player to get a double figure tonight. 9-3, Chicago. Now the Red Wings have the play back in their own zone. Brad Park ahead to Boulder F. Ivan Bolderev from the blue line drives it wide. It goes in behind the goal. Bolderev dug it out there. They didn't come out. Held in by Trader, then taken away. And here come the Hawks. Murray over the line. Troy Murray. Troy Murray is centering pass. Knocked away. Fraser holds it off the circle. Sets up Ben Wilson with a drive. And Mikola stopped that. And Dugay came across the net and knocked it out of danger. Good save by Mikola. Here's Bolderev moving back into the Chicago zone. Dumped it into the corner, then took a pretty good hit from Pete Brown. The Hawks come right back. Olchek upended by Brad Clark. But over the line is Troy Murray. Murray moves right into position, took the shot. And Mikulov came out of the net and knocked it away. Now Eisenman goes in behind his own goal. Up the right wing for Duguay. Duguay just tips it back into the Chicago zone. And it is all Blackhawks. O'Callaghan right back to the Detroit blue line with a shot that Mikola steers off. Gallant dumps it out center ice and Lysiak has it there. Mano knocks it down center ice, hands it back to Greg Smith and back to Mano. Now Sutter will take it for Chicago, takes the long shot. Mikola steers that away. Greg Smith didn't get it out, held in by O'Callaghan. In behind the Detroit goal, it goes in along the boards. Lysiak gets into it, put it right out in front. Bounces out center ice, and the Hawks will play it there. Isaac kicked it to the Detroit line. Barrett picks it up, back down the ice, into the Chicago zone. He failed to go any place. The Hawks are going to shoot it the length of the ice. It'll be an icing call. No, they waved it off. So Greg Smith is going to have to play it. Smith tips it ahead. Here's Mano out at center ice, up the right side. Too far for Foster. It goes in behind the Chicago goal. Into the corner, Doug Wilson. Sends it ahead for Lysiak. He tips it back into the Detroit zone, and Mikulov played it back center ice. Gallant knocked it down there. The Hawks have it again. Steve Ludzik shoots it into the corner, deep in the Detroit zone. John Barrett plays it ahead to Mano. Now Foster. Dwight Foster. Six and a half minutes into the third period. Over the line, Barrett put it right through the goal crease. Foster chases it down along the boards. His pass docked down. Here's Sittler. 
going into the corner after it, putting it right through the goal mouth. But they whistled the play down, the puck glove from one player to another. Pause in the action, 9 to 3 Chicago. We'll be back in a moment. Late. Don't worry, we'll be on time. With the flick of a switch, American Eagle lets you shift on the fly from two-wheel drive to the sure-footed traction of four-wheel drive. Because sometimes security is the most important thing your car can give you. They wouldn't have missed this for the world. When nature makes it rain or snow, fight back. Make it Eagle. just to more or less give him some work, I would think. Bannerman may have been injured, though, back there a few months ago. They're working on Bannerman over along the bridge. Uh, There's a drive by Larson. Larson fires another one. And Skorodinsky stays in front of both of them. Well, goaltenders like that to come in and get some action right off the bat while he was tested right in the first few seconds. Let's take five seconds right now for station identification. TV 20, WXON, Detroit. We have played seven minutes of the third period. Chicago 9, Detroit 3. Murray Bannerman over on the Chicago bench. He had a busy night, too. I would think we'll see him tomorrow. What a thrill it is for this young Skorodensky to come in. Uh, his first action at the National Hockey League playoffs coming up with a big save right after coming in to replace Bannerman. Now the puck sent off to the side of his own goal by the Hawks themselves, Savard. Savard picks it off at his own blue line out at center ice. Here's Steve Larmer ahead to Secord. Being chased by Joe Kocher, Secord went to the ice. And the Red Wings' Loisel clears it ahead for Sittner. Comes back now to Larson. Larson, another long shot. Skorodetsky bucks out into the corner. Will pick it up and Larmer clears it ahead off the skate of Savard. Came right back to Larmer. Now Secord. Here's Al Secord carrying into the Detroit zone. Wings try to work it out. It's still bouncing around in the Detroit end. Larson got it back to the line, but not out. And the drive by Ben Wilson is wide. Brown played it in behind the Detroit goal. Larson played it right out in front of the Detroit net, but Latticer covers up. Loisel ahead to Sittner. Sittner's return pass never got through. Then Latticer takes it and scores. Randy Latticer drove one shot right at the goaltender Skorodinsky. It came right back to him. And he fired it in, and now it's 9-4. to four. Well, there was a case where Chicago let up, and uh, Sittner and Loisel made a, a good play to one another as they went in the zone. Sittner to Loisel. Loisel was taken off the play, and the puck just coasted over in front of the net. Lattister took the first shot, went back and picked up the rebound. He had the whole net to put it in, so a quick goal on Mr. Skorodinsky. But it was Sittler to Loisel, and the puck just come across in front. Nobody bothered picking Lattister up. That was a clear case of Chicago thinking about goals, no That's defense. Right. Kelly Kissio loses his helmet at center ice. The Wings bring it into the Chicago zone. Trader with a shot that went just wide. Patterson took it off the boards, didn't get it out. Doug Wilson's pass knocked down. Wilson drove it down with a high stick. Ludzik plays it into the corner. Brad Park tried to hold it in, couldn't do it. Slides back to the Detroit blue line, over the line. Gardner drops it off. Right out in front, and a shot just wide of the goal by Steve Ludzik. Now here's Patterson again, going into the corner after deep in the Detroit zone. O'Grodnick takes him in along the boards. Bounce right out in front and deflected over the top of the net by Gardner. Both teams very careless in their own end. Brad Smith's pass didn't come out. Stopped in behind the Detroit goal. O'Grodnick feeds it ahead to Kissio. Kelly Kissio at center ice. Kissio into the Chicago zone with a shot that's way wide. Brad Smith will hold it in. Smith put it right through the goal crease. Here's Larry Trader taking it in toward the corner, rolled it out in front. Kissio knocks falling. Brad Smith with a shot to deflect it away. Slides all the way back into the Detroit zone, and Larry Trader comes back after it. Trader's pass knocked down by Olchick. DuPont picks it up, lifts it over the glass, up into the crowd behind the Detroit goal. Detroit goal 9 to 4. 29, 
Chicago leads as we pause now for this message. What does it mean when a Shell dealer displays this sign? It means he makes these important promises to give you a written estimate up front, to have certified mechanics and the right equipment for the job. And he backs his work in writing. In a word, your Shell Auto Care dealer promises to give you quality car repair service right here in your neighborhood. Look for this sign, Shell Auto Care. Unlike a playoff game, game just freewheeling, a puck taking a bad bounce and coming right out in front of the net, and instead of being put in the net, was put over the top. Loisel and Sittler drew the assist on Lattice's goal at 7.55. Ten and a half minutes to play now here in the third period. Steve Eisenman at center ice. Eisenman back over the line. Here's Eisenman breaking right by everybody, going in and scoring! Now, where were the Chicago defensemen <laughs> there? Steve Eisenman just, he made a couple of weaves at the blue line and, and then took a look and there was nobody in front of him. But well, what the Red Wings are showing right now is they can score goals That's right. in the Chicago. Everybody team. just moved aside, and Steve Eisenman pulled Skordensky to one side, then went up over the top of him. But a little drop of the shoulder, and he had everybody going the wrong way, and Steve made no mistake. And the goaltender went down on his haunches a lot too soon. So now it's 9-5 to five with 10 minutes and 15 seconds to play. Third period, Chicago leading by four again. Played back into the Detroit zone. Barrett sweeps it ahead for Boulder. Evan Eisenman and Duguay move out. Eisenman drops it off for Duguay with a shot. Skorendinsky grabs onto that. He's going to hold it. And a faceoff stays in the Chicago end. And playoff hockey is supposed to be very defensive. Tight checking. Tight checking. And here we've had 14 goals scored in a wide open contest with. Chicago, of course, with a big 9-5 lead. Still a lot of time. Well, the we Red might set a, excuse me, there might be a record set of goals scored to this playoff. Philadelphia Flyers in overtime beat the New York Rangers 5-4. St. Louis has scored. That's 3-2 Minnesota now in the third period. Foster, Gallant, and Mano, the forward line of the wings. Foster won the draw. Here's Larson with a shot. Oh, and Skorodetsky reached up and held on to that one. And he wasn't sure he had oh. that. That could have been on that. 9-5, Chicago leads. We'll be back. Let's pause first for this. Renault introduces five years or 50,000 miles. Plus, protection on required maintenance. Small car protection even better than Chrysler. 550 plus on all Renaults like the Alliance Sedan, stylish Renault Encore, and 8.5, America's lowest factory financing. European technology with America's best small car protection. Only from Renault. Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel, our producer director Toby Cunningham here at Chicago Stadium. The Red Wings trail by four, nine to five. It's been a wide open sort of a game. The Red Wings actually outshot Chicago in the first two periods, 18 and 15 and 15 and eight, 33 and 23. Well, it's not playoff hockey when you have this many goals scored and uh, you don't want to get into a wide open shooting contest with this Chicago hockey club. Now the play came back to Ben Wilson with a drive. Mikulov kicks that one out. Red Wings fail to get it out the first time. Gallant takes it off the board, tips it ahead to Foster. Brought back to Gallant. Foster was decked. Gallant goes over the line, but Nano was shoved in ahead of him, and the play is offside. Sid, we've mentioned during the course of the broadcast recently that the Red Wings have a couple of records, and it shows in this game. They scored more goals this season than they ever have previously but they've also given up more yes they've set records both for scoring goals and having goals scored against them they scored 313 and had 357 scored against them now the puck sliding back into the chicago zone comes all the way back into the detroit end savard chasing brad park savard knocked park off the puck Trader came back to cover up 
picks it up, scoops it out, center ice. Good move by Kocher to hold the puck over the line into the Chicago zone. Kocher in behind the goal, put it right to the goal mouse, and Sittler's oh, shot is blocked boy. by Skorodinsky. I thought, sure, that puck oh, was in the net. Kocher made a terrific play from behind the net right out to Sittler. I don't know how Skorodinsky made the save on this. Kocher just went circled all the way around behind the net, carried the play with just one hand on his stick, put it right out to Sittler, and Sittler got rid of it, and he put it right into the pad. It bounced over, and then Detroit had another chance to possibly put it in, but couldn't do it. Loisel had the second opportunity at it. Puck rolled over his pad, and Claude must have put it right back in between his legs again. Face-off stays to the left of the Chicago goal. We have nine minutes to play. Third period. Loisel won the draw. Here's Park handing it back to Larry Trader. Trader drives a shot, and the net has been knocked off that magnet as Loisel was given a bump by Ben Wilson. So again, with a score 9-5 for Chicago, we pause for this visit. Pizza makers everywhere have developed highly sophisticated factories to make their pizza. So has Little Caesars. For instance, this is the highly sophisticated factory that makes our cheese. This is the automated plant that makes our special sauce. And these are the sophisticated machines that put it all together. At Little Caesars, we still make pizza the old-fashioned way. We make it, and we always give you the second pizza free. Because when you make a pizza this good, one just isn't enough. Play will come back to the left side of the Chicago goal. Loisel, Sittler, and Kocher remain up front for the wings. Park and Trader. The Hawks gain control. Jerome Dupont in behind his own goal. Now Dupont feeds it ahead for Savard. Savard shoved off the puck by Park. Here's Sittler. Sittler hands it off now. Loisel with a shot that went wide. Kocher held it in off the circle. His shot blocked by Secord. Now Park hands it back to Kocher. Here's Sittler with it. Sittler's shot just bounced right to the goal mouth. And it's held there by the goaltender, Skordinsky. You know, Bob Pulford may be wondering uh, what's going on here. Detroit are getting a lot of scoring opportunities. He may be coming back with Bannerman here shortly if we Wings were to score another goal or so. Yeah, the nine goals scored by Chicago uh, breaks all previous playoff records for the Hawks. Oh, I figured the goal scored. Records. Uh, if Detroit score another two, you'll probably find a total goal by two clubs uh, record broken. That would be more goals than the years ago in my playing days. That would be scored probably in a whole series. A lot of one to nothing games, huh? Here's Greg Smith lifting it in behind the Chicago goal. O'Grotnik put it right out in front. It came back to the line. Greg Smith drove a shot wide. John chases it off the board. Reflected it into the corner. O'Callaghan goes in after it. Kissio knocked it off his stick. Giving chase back of the goal. Brad Smith made the play. Here's Kissio. John O'Grodnick. His pass knocked down as a shot right on. A save made. A rebound right out in front of the goal. And down on top of it is O'Callaghan. He holds on to it. And the Wings came that close to getting their sixth goal. They've had two or three great chances here in the last couple of minutes. Chicago not been able to get out of their zone. Brad Smith is a very instrumental player on this Red Wing club because he goes in deep and is very strong at taking players off the puck. Brad is having a few words with referee Lewis. There was but, a lot of grabbing and holding going on. But that puck was everywhere but in. And John O'Grodnick couldn't find the handle. The puck was sitting there, but nobody could get a hold of it to put it in. And finally was frozen out in front of the net by O'Callaghan. Minnesota had defeated St. Louis. That game being played in St. Louis. Minnesota three, St. Louis two. Here it is nine to five. Chicago leading the wings. A play to the right side of the Chicago goal. Final score: Minnesota North. Latticer, Eisenman, John O'Grodnick, Mano, and Larson. The goal scorers for Detroit. Face off to the right of the Chicago goal. Edmonton has taken a two to one lead over Los Angeles. Brad Smith bumped in along the boards back in the Chicago net by Ben Wilson. The puck is held in back now to Kissio. And again, that puck is or rather the net is knocked away by the Chicago defense. And they've done that 
three different times. Well, they're trying to cover Brad Smith. Brad uh, trying to block out in front of the net. Ben Wilson just come along, and he just let Smith go and knock the net off. Well, it is 9-5 Chicago. We'll be back right after this. Got me a case of the 501 Blues Here from my waist right down to my shoes You ain't got it, not like me It's my strength to fit permanent identity I 501 Blues Legendary 501 Blues Levi's but die Brought to you by J.C. Penney Your headquarters for Levi's 501 Jeans Four goals have been the difference in this hockey game on and off all through the game. Chicago got out in front four to nothing in the first period. Here now Chicago over on the right side. Patterson is passed, knocked down by Barrett, but bounced out center ice. Brad Smith comes back after, turns right back up the ice, drives a shot wide. John O'Grodney get it on the skate. They kick away at it in the corner. Smith goes in after it. Back on the line to John Barrett. His shot deflected well wide of the goal. Now Kelly Kissio held it in for Greg Smith. Brad Smith really manhandled out in front of the goal by Keith Brown. Right back down the ice now is Patterson into the Detroit zone. Rich Patterson lost it, taken away by John Barrett. Barrett heads right back up ice for Detroit. Here's Barrett. O'Gardney caught on the left side. Barrett plays it the right to Kissio. Kissio hands it off to Smith with a drive. Skorendinsky got in front of that. Brad Smith tips it in behind the Chicago goal. The Hawks going after it. Center ice pass to Steve Ludzik. Ludzik content to just lay it off to the side of the Detroit net. Reed Larson will play. Six minutes, 40 seconds to play, third period. Steve Eisenman back over the line into the Chicago zone. Trying to go through, he did. Skorendinsky oh. made the save and then leans out to hold on to the rebound. A good effort by Eisenman. It's unreal the way the wings have come in here in this third period. He just, Eisenman just dropped the shoulder and the de defenseman went for the deep, walked right through and took a shot. Skorodensky couldn't reach the rebound, but it was pushed back into him. The wings doing everything but score the sixth goal. It's great to see young, talented hockey players like Savard and Eisenman make moves like that on defensemen, get them going the wrong way, and they can really deep with that puck. Boulder, Ev, Eisenman, and Duguay. The puck lay right there in the circle off to the left of the Chicago goal. Duguay bounced it, but it's cleared away. Fraser failed to get it out. Now it does bounce center ice, and Latticer will take it. Randy Latticer hands it in his old blue line to Larson. Reed Larson. Up the left side, Eisenman digging in after it, being chased by Bob Murray, back of the goal. Asking right out in front, but Boulder has couldn't reach it. Olchek. He's held off the puck by Larson. It's picked away by Fraser. Put it right through the goal crease. Boulder have couldn't get it out. Ivan goes into the corner after it and lifts it in the air. Bounces it back into the Chicago zone. Doug Wilson hands it there now to O'Callaghan. Jack O'Callaghan back hands it in behind the Detroit net, and Larson will go back after it. Here's Reed Larson heading out. Larson turns away from Troy Murray's check and behind his own net again. Hands it off to Latticer, center ice to Gallant. Gerard Gallant over the Chicago blue line. He's trying to go through. Wilson held him off the puck. Now the Hawks to Callahan sends it ahead. Here's Sutter at center ice. Sutter checked from behind by Gallant, who made a good play on him. And now Latticer's pass ended up behind Foster. Brad Park picks it up. Foster over the line into the Chicago zone. Gallant laid it into the corner. Doug Wilson will take it in behind his own goal. Now Wilson up the right board, over the line, into the Detroit zone. A bouncing puck, though, and Gallant covers up. Gerard Gallant's pass deflected away from Foster. The Hawks shoot it back into the Detroit end. A little less than five minutes to play. Third period, 9-5. Foster was tied up by Lysiak to Remchuk. Didn't work by Brad Park. Play stays deep in the Detroit zone. Foster dug it out, but not out. Here now is Ben Wilson at the blue line. Ben Wilson played it in toward the corner, Yeremchuk. Left it there for Lysiak. His pass tipped away by Gallant, who bounces it to the center ice area. Yeremchuk played it back into the Detroit end. Brad Park will chase it down. Park gives it now to Larry Trader, coming out center ice. 
It skips into the Chicago zone. Then Wilson goes into the corner. Chased by Sittler, but it comes loose. Secord failed to work it out. Now it comes center ice. Knocked away there by Greg Smith. Sittler can't pull a stick away from Ben Wilson. And Secord came back. A Smith a bump. Puck slides into the corner of the Chicago end. Larmer goes back after it. Steve Larmer's in behind his own goal. A little less than four minutes to play. Puck held in by John Barrett. Now Kocher left it in the corner. Barrett bumped into Brown. The Hawks have possession and they'll move it out. On the move, Savard. That is Savard over the line into the Detroit zone. Savard played it into the corner. Larmer goes in after it. He was dumped by Loisel. Secord lost it along the boards to John Barrett. John Barrett out in front of his own net. Works his way center ice. Here is Barrett driving it back into the Chicago zone. It goes in behind the Hawks goal. DuPont plays it right back to Greg Smith. Greg Smith took a long shot and deflected wide. Secord off the boards with it. 310 to play. Here's Secord at center ice. Firing it back into the Detroit zone, and Greg Smith comes back after it. The wings are down by four with three minutes to play here in the third period. Nelly Kissio drops it off for Barrett. This pass knocked down at the blue line by Ludzik. The Hawks have possession in the Detroit zone. Buck came out in front. O'Grodnick tipped it away. Barrett slapped it in behind his own goal. The Hawks have it. Here's Steve Ludzik in the corner. Sets up O'Callaghan with a drive. And Mikola stops that and holds up. That's the first week of work that Corrado's had in quite some time. It's been pretty well going the other way. It was a high shot. I don't know if he'd be credited with a shot on net or not. I believe it was up over the net. Could have caught maybe just the top bar. Calgary and Winnipeg have gone into overtime and a game being played at Winnipeg. A lot of great looking games. Uh, uh, there's others. 5-4 Philadelphia over the Rangers in overtime. Island, Islanders losing to Washington 4-3 in overtime. Boston defeating Montreal 5-3 in Montreal. Quebec defeating Buffalo 5-2 in, in Quebec. Minnesota defeating St. Louis 3-2 in St. Louis. So the home teams are not all winning tonight. Red Wings in Chicago again tomorrow night. 8.30 our telecast and broadcast time. Then the two teams into the Joe Louis Arena Saturday and Sunday. And Tickets for those two games, the package tickets, go on sale, are on sale, and are available still at the Joe Louis Arena box office. Reed Larson, a long pass at center ice, skipped too far for Kissio. They wave off the icing, though. And Callahan in behind his own net. Swings it up the left wing for Ludzik. Steve Ludzik trying to pull away from Kissio, still deep in the Chicago end. So Grodnick made the check, the play stays, then bounces out center ice, and Larson moved in to knock it away. John O'Grodnick plays it back into the Detroit end. Larson hands it off to Latticer. Randy Latticer pinned by Ludzik. Larson follows up, starts Kissio out. O'Grodnick on the left side as Kissio is over the line into the Chicago end. Here's Kissio trying to work around Doug Wilson. Wilson has Kissio all tied up. And Chicago will play it back to the line and golf it out center ice. A minute 45 left. Lattice back into the Chicago zone with a shot that never got through. Keith Brown chases it down in the corner of the Chicago end. Plays it back at a Hawks goal. Now Ludzik brings it back for Chicago. They tip it into the Detroit end. Trader knocks it down for the wings. Larry Trader starts out. Here's Trader. Over the line into the Chicago end. Tried to set up Eisenman, knocked away from him by Ben Wilson. Running right back down the ice, Troy Murray over the line into the Detroit zone. He's stopped by Brad Park. Park's pass didn't come out. Here's a drive by Olchick and a good save by Mickel. Now Brad Park has Dugay at center ice. A minute to play. Over the line. Boulderev with a shot. Jordanetsky just did get in front of that. Olchick for Chicago just shoots it back into the Detroit zone. Brad Park comes back after it. Park off to the side of his goal. Feeds it ahead for Larry Trader. Up the right wing, Dugay. Now it's Bolderev over the line. The shot block. Dugay trying to get to it. Rolled it right to the net. And Skorandensky reaches out and holds on with 34 seconds left. 
hard to believe the shot board with Detroit are going to no doubt outshoot the Chicago club here tonight and lose the hockey game by four goals, nine to five. The Wings have had, I think, as many shots here in the third period as they've had in either the first or second. And great chances, but not capable of just finishing it off right out in front of the net. But it has been a wide open, non-playoff hockey game. Hey, who's that? That looks like Miss Piggy. Face off, whistle down just as soon as they drop the puck. Well, what the Red Wings have done, I think, in this third period particularly, is find out that they can carry the play to this Chicago club. They've done it. They've outscored Chicago in the third period, two to one. Now Callahan of the Hawks in behind his own net. Pass knocked down by Larry Trader. Gallant headed out in front, a bouncing puck held in by Mano. Brad Park with a drive. Went over the top of the net. Gallant put it right to the goal, and Skorandinsky has to hold on to that. There have been some shots that have been missed the net that have really been traveling. Now, Brad Park, I didn't realize he could shoot a puck as hard as that. From just inside the blue line, he got all the wood on it, over the net, hit the glass, bounced right back out. One of the things going for the Wings tomorrow will be the return of Danny Gear. And that's going to mean a lot, too, to the hockey club. He is their captain, and uh, he's the one that seems to stick them together. Here's Bob Mano holding it in. The puck lay right out in front of the Chicago goal. And the Hawks are going to ice it. Brad Park hurries back after him, and now he has six seconds remaining. I still should have to say that I did not agree thoroughly or fully with the National Hockey League's ruling on the suspension to oh, nor did I. Was it? Well, we were there. We saw it happen, and uh, the way I look at it, Danny Garrison, experienced hockey player, he's not going on the ice with one second to go. No way. He skated down to the corner of the, the no. Things happen right where the Red Wings go off the ice to go to the dressing room. The rule for the first man off the bench, the reason of the game suspension, is to keep the benches from emptying. That's right. Evans, this came from the other side, didn't mean a thing. But it was a serious call to Detroit. Now here's Brad Park holding it in, and the siren goes to end the first game of the Stanley Cup playoffs between the Detroit Red Wings and the Chicago Blackhawks. And the Hawks will scoot off, winning it 9-5. to five. Well, they took that 2 to nothing lead at 426 and 447. Added another with Savard's goal at 836 in the first period. Left 4 to nothing before the period was over. And that was really uh, all it wrote. The Red Wings got one back in the first period. You believe the shots and goal? 18 and 7 in the third period. We'll be back to recap it all for you. Let's pause first for this message. J.C. Penny, your headquarters for Levi's 501 Jeans. A simple shopping trip without the Ameritech Michigan Bell Yellow Pages could be an unforgettable experience. You could end up going in circles or going no place fast. And getting there, too late. Going down one blind alley after another. Why go through that when you can go through Michigan's most complete shopping guide before you leave? The Ameritech Michigan Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. Well, the Detroit Red Wings fell behind four to nothing.